everybody. Hi. Good evening. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to my Sunday. Wait, my mic is super off. I sound like shit, don't I? Okay, there we go. Wow, what am I doing? Oh my gosh. <clears throat> yeah, so um I guess I'll do a drawstring, but first I have some fiendish stuff to show you guys because if you back the fiendish 2.5 campaigns, I just posted an update and the books are here. So let me show you those books. I have cool stuff to reveal and uh, I showed the enamel pins and the pendant also arrived and I think I showed that on creative blog, but I haven't showed it on my own channel yet. So let me just talk about fiendish first. And then I will segue, just uh, flow into actually drawing. And I'm doing a cover for Phenomenova, which is Mr. Vaughn Coleman's book. So um, for the second half of the show, that's what I'll be working on. So yeah, thank you for being here with me today for this late impromptu stream. I really appreciate it. Thank you. <clears throat> Sarki said I showed them Wednesday. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sarki remembers better than me. I have no idea. I don't remember what I've showed, what I've talked about. It's just all a blur. Like, this week has been crazy. I mean, every week is crazy, though. <clears throat> Literally every week. But, yeah. um, I do feel like I have a huge weight off my shoulder because uh, I finished my taxes at the last minute. I know. But I'm kind of happy because it turned out well because <laughs> I had so many expenses. So uh, anyways, I'm actually happy. Um, I'm getting a refund. Yay! For the first time in like my life. <laughs> I'm so happy. Yeah. So um, I'm in a celebratory mood. I may or may not drink a little bit. And yes, when I start working on the cover, Vaughn, I saw you in chat. I'll send you the link when I start drawing the cover. Um, but yeah, right now I just want to uh, ramble on my own like a crazy person for a bit and talk about fiendish yay he's a monster now oh, oh fuse box for ten dollars thank you were you wondering what happened at outlaw nights guess what i'm back on indiegogo if you missed the ship to the greatest space opera series of comics this lifeboat is ready to get you there awesome thank you for the super chat fuse box and everybody go check out outlaw nights back on indiegogo he was on the show uh one of my creator's roundtable shows a while ago so you can go back to see him on that show if you want and it should you could should be able to search it because i have everybody all the guests listed in the descriptions and stuff hold on my chair is too low but yeah so everyone go check out outlaw nights on indiegogo and thank you for the super chat wait my chair is too low i'm actually using my standing desk as a standing desk now so the height is all weird you should see like I'm wiggling because my feet are completely off the ground. I'm like in the air. I'm like really high. I would feel like a little kid. <laughs> now, you know, I could also stand at my standing desk, but oh, it's just too much work. I actually did do that yesterday, but not now. I don't like streaming while standing. I feel stressed. Beast finished. You already drunk? No, I haven't had a drop to drink. Actually, I had a bunch of coffee, so I might be really hyped up on coffee, but nope. Not a drop to drink. Look, I got my plushies behind me. Isn't that cute? I put I have this big shelf behind me. And uh it has like a cloth in front of us. It just looks like a black blob. But yeah, I have my little plushies. Look. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm a child. Mm. Here's a link of Vaughn posted a link for Phenomenova. There you go. So everybody go sign up. That will be launching in less than a week on my channel. Hello, Maromi. What's up? La 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 la. Coffee stream. Yeah. Yeah. Well, every stream for me is a coffee stream. Even the ones where I'm drinking, it's a coffee stream. So, you know, Jake said he wanted to see these fiendish books because he colored them. He was all excited. He was like, I want to see you flip through them. Show me the books. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'll show it on my Sunday draw stream. Because I do a stream every Sunday night. And now he's not here. <laughs> so, to be fair, it's probably like, what, five in the morning in England? Angloland? <laughs> so he's probably asleep. So we'll wait for a bit. Maybe if he comes in late, I'll flip through them again. Uh, awesome one. He's about to have a frappuccino. That sounds great. Um, let's see. Maromi just got off work. 
Awesome. Is that a fiendish flag? Yeah, let's pretend it's a fiend. Is it a fiendish? It's a fiendish flag. I actually did design flags for some of the factions and countries in fiendish. Then I just kind of decided that... So those exist if I need to use them, but then I kind of it decided that it's really not that important because you know how a lot of fantasy is about like how royal houses and countries and stuff. And I'm like, that's not really what my story is about. I had this weird idea where I wanted to make fiendish just about normal people. Like there's very, you barely will meet anybody with royal blood. There's a couple of people eventually with like kind of special lineages, but you don't have like royal blood. Like you don't really, you know, we meet some royals, but they're just like, okay, this is somebody we have to convince to help us and shit. Um, so it kind of didn't come in super useful. So most of the world building is, uh, is has went towards just figuring out, well, what's the culture? What's like, the economic systems which does matter because when the characters travel to a location i have to believably draw everything anyways i'm getting too into it um i've been like thinking about this stuff all day because guess what this is a tangent but it's also important because it relates to fiendish um i have a bunch of world building videos recorded so i thought it would be a good idea to talk about the world building of fiendish so so far i have the Istboliad the dev, I have um, the, uh, well, one of the magic system, the one that was in chapter two, and I have, like, character profiles for Cosmia, Ragna, and Yomi, so those, I have, like, recordings for that, and I'll just, like, bash some, like, visuals and video with that and upload that, so that should be kind of cool. I hope you guys like that. I don't know. I don't know if that kind of content is boring or not, but I like watching that kind of stuff. Like, I'll spend hours watching videos about the history of the Rohirrim and th those kind of things. So I'm like, let me do something similar. And I don't know if it's as interesting because I don't have, like, a finished cool story like Tolkien did to support that kind of world-building rambling. But, well, you never know until you try. He's a monster, says relax. I'm very relaxed. Am I talking too fast? No, I didn't mean that in a condescending way. I, just, I, I had a lot of coffee, so I, I like I like talking a mile a minute. I'm very relaxed. I'm so happy today. I'm in a good mood. It's great, because in a week a week ago, I was not in a good mood. Um, here, my light is too bright. I look like a ghost. Rini's royals aren't inbred. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> Most royals throughout history were inbred, except for, like, I guess, I don't know, a lot of European royals were really inbred. So whose idea was that? Like, all the world families were related to each other. Um, it's like, I found out a while ago that Tsar Nicholas was like, there's like first, he was like first cousins with just, everybody was German. Like, the British royal family was German. The, the Russian royal family was German. And Tsar Nicholas was like first cousins with like a bunch of Germans and the British royal family too. I'm like, so it's just like one family. Like, why are you fighting each other? What the fuck? <laughs> but I think like in China they didn't really have that because there was this whole system where the emperor would take a bunch of concubines so it was like just a harem so I guess that helps prevent inbreeding so either inbreeding or harems it's the way to go <laughs> Jim Alaska keeps some money in the same family that makes sense yeah I guess when they're going to war they're not sending you know their family they're like sending commoners so i guess they don't really mind isn't that nice job says is we got around the germans sure did got around you know the germans have like covertly uh just been <laughs> puppeteering europe um if you look at it a certain way no germany is cool I, oh my gosh i need to go to europe sometime and i'm gonna go to germany i can't wait um all right I think I'm caught up in chat. Does Fiendish Land have a currency? Fiendish Land is mostly a barter-based currency because it's a medieval society. But I do have coins. So if you look at the map of Arvos... Oh, we can just have the map over there, but I don't want to take it off my wall. Um, if you look at the map of Arvos... Do I have an actual... I should have, like, an image that I can pull up and that would really help um dun 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 i have this look at that can i make myself small 
No, it doesn't actually let me do that. Um, no. Lame, lame, lame. Okay, never mind. Actually, I'll just keep that as background. Should I? It doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, so most of the countries are, it's kind of lawless and I don't have like big kingdoms. So go on the website, look at the map page and read the descriptions. It's, it's mostly chieftainships and independent towns and stuff. So you don't really have a unified currency except for Drakia and Erisek. So Erisek is like a proper country. They're a little bit like Germany, Germany-ish, except um, I just, um, the clothing is different and everything, but the vibe I'm feeling is, okay, they're kind of like the central continental power. Drakia is the merchant. They're like a merchant society and they're really rich. So they actually have currency and Drakian coins are a whole thing. They've got this weird shape. Oh, I can't wait to show you guys. There's so much more of the world building I've thought out. I have a sketchbook full of this stuff. So uh, someday we'll get to it. Someday. Hey, Snuggy, what's up? Hola. <laughs> that would be great. Okay, let me actually show you the books. Let me show you the books after a shot of coffee. Mm. Coffee. Bohemian, kind of. Actually, should I show you guys? Let me show you guys. Oh, let me get the sketchbook. Hold on, be right gonna get to showing you guys these books mm. okay um i'm so excited i did some rough sketches for some of like the clothing style so this is like the girliest thing that i do day to day i really like designing clothes so i'm big on the clothing design being distinctive for all the characters and not just of course the characters but each region and cultural style and i just i love designing the outfits from book to book and that's why I have this thing where the characters change clothes, which is a bit of a, I mean, so they don't have just like one outfit that they wear forever, right? Um, even though each character will have like two cloaks that they always wear, there's like certain cuts of clothes, they have their own style. But I actually like thinking through all the details and keeping track of like, what is their wardrobe? It is the girliest thing I do for world building, but I think it works out great because I think that's immersive. Okay, here. Okay, this other page is spoilery, but look. Okay, here's um, yeah, some of the uh, the clothes I've designed. You know, it's kind of medievally, but kind of not. I want to go a little frilly and a little more like veils and stuff. So you can see the bottom. That's Arisek there, and these. That's another. This is like another um an ethnicity called Uzmi and they're all like white frill like full flowy clothes with like bands and stuff so this is the kind of stuff that I do for fun and there's other these other clothes I can't show but yeah um oh and look I've been doing demon designs look at that this has been fun this is chapter two so that's a little sneak peek. I'm going to just fill this page with demon designs. Um, you're going to get so many demons. Oh, no, not chapter two, chapter three. You're going to get so many demons. It's going to be awesome. Snarky says chastity belts. No, not chastity belts. Okay, that's all I can show. Because it'll be spoilery if I show any more. Okay. All right. Now, for real, we can look at books. You guys ready? Yay! <laughs> Look at my new books! My new books! <laughs> I'm so happy! Yay! Okay, I'm gonna start out with showing Fiendish 1, 2, because we did a new reprint. And it's about the same as the last reprint. All these covers, uh, the colors turned out awesome. My printer is really good at printing colors. So if you guys know CMYK, the colors kind of usually look duller than they do on a computer screen. 
there's nothing you can do about it. That's just how printing works. But um, my printer makes has a way of making the colors just come off really bright and they look so good. So yeah, this hasn't changed much since the, well, it's changed a little bit. Yeah, this is a second edition. So if you open it, now I have the, the interior has this credits page and it says second edition. So uh, I'm keeping track of the editions now. Like the covers always be the same. I'm hoping that like, cause, okay. So I had the campaign version, then I did another print run with this same cover but in the interiors have some slight differences and i fixed some problems so uh that was still the first edition just with a permanent cover so if you see a second edition the, obviously that's the second edition and i'm hoping this is like final i won't need to edit it more i think it's pretty good um i've come to a nice format for these books like I will, um, like, kind of how the for front pages are formatted and the extra content. Of course, I have my Nanarsa page. And then I have, uh, like, the thank you page at the end for backers. And then just a few pages of world building content. And that will be, like, the permanent market edition. So, see, world building content, which you guys should definitely read if you get Fiendish books. The That content is there for you to read. So, yeah. And this doesn't I don't think you can really see it in um in, on camera but this is like this is soft touch lamination it's the same kind of lamination if you have any of the isom books or Phil and Brandon's lost pages books that like super smooth cover texture that's what this is and it's so nice it's so nice you guys will love it oh I'm so happy yeah, I don't, um, I was, I was like, can we do, like, real, the really matte, um, soft touchy kind of cover? That sounded weird, but it turned out great, and, um, because I've usually just gone with matte before, and now that I'm, I'm looking at this, I have half a mind to want to do UV again, because UV would look so good on this, because imagine this, like, just really subtle, soft matte texture with, shiny uv would pop so much but yeah um i think we're fine i think i'm gonna keep it simple just do the covers like this you know the paper stock is really good uh, i go with much thicker paper stock than the um than like industry standard which is 60 pound i use like 80 pound paper at least so these are this is really nice print quality already when i do the collected editions or like an omnibus or something in the future i think i'll save all the fancy schmancy stuff for that um yeah i think that's that's just a little more straightforward so fiendish one reprints i got a ton of these the store orders if you order through the fiendishcomic.com store, we'll be going out. I actually already sent out a couple of them. Um, some people have been, because it was on pre-order, some people have been waiting for forever. So um, I, because the printer sent me a batch of the book. So I just took those out of my own stock, mailed those out. The rest will be fulfilled by RJ along with the campaigns, which will uh, be proceeding this week. Okay. You want to see a new Fiendish too? <laughs> one says you want to do matte for yours i actually think gloss or satin would work better for yours i mean it's just a personal opinion but i it depends on the art style but i think a matte finish works better for fantasy and like a satin or gloss finish works better for superheroes or sci-fi it's not like a hard and fast rule. It really depends on how you want the world to feel. It kind of is like a shiny world or a gritty world. Does that make sense? But I want Fiendish to feel very natural. Everything is very natural textures. Everything is matte. Um, well, except for these covers. These are satin. But um, I thought, well, it's the first floppy, so I thought I could make an exception. But yeah, these the perfect bound books are all matte or soft touch lamination because I wanted a very natural, earthy feel to all the products. Um, so yeah. But yeah, I mean, do whatever you want. Uh, I would, I think your artist style fits satin finishing, though. Monsters is... So I do. Uh, there was a base here. It's just about fumble. What are you talking about? I don't know what you mean. I'm sorry. I don't understand. I don't understand. Um. Oh, that's fucked up. 
Your DoorDash driver steals your order? I hope you can get your money back. That's fucked up. I use Grubhub because they'll refund me if that happens. Um, Becker said, the best lamination is scuff-free mat. Hmm. Ooh. I'll ask for that next time. Yeah, I'll ask for that next time. I don't know if this is scuff-free. Probably not. I mean, I don't see... It is very, like... Like, if I scratch it like this, I don't see anything. It's very... I, I have no idea. Um, I don't think this is scuff-free mat. I just remember the um, the covers for Isom felt really nice. And the Diaz's have a similar kind of finishing. Like a varnish on a painting. Yeah. Yeah, I'll check that out next time. Hey, JW Learning. Hello, Wolfler. Hello, Wolfler. Okay, look. <laughs> look, it's the permanent cover. Oh, oh, it's so nice. I'm so happy how it turned out. This is one of those covers that it's weird. I don't think it works very... I mean, it's fine as an illustration. I actually didn't think it worked very well as an illustration, but as a cover with a title text, it, it worked really well. If that makes any sense, it probably doesn't. But, um, but yeah, so this is the permanent cover for chapter two. And here's the back. And this is, um, the back cover was by my colorist, Nick. He, he does, he's done all the, back covers for the uh, permanent edition so far so this is also his drawing he's got this very cartoony loopy style and uh this is also by him so I'm just gonna, i like consistency so the permanent covers I'll always have nick on the back and i will be doing the uh the permanent covers and i also like how these covers for the uh the perma covers are more a little more story focused it was kind of unintentional, but I think I've settled on this general vibe of the campaign covers are more flashy. Like that's the cheesecake covers and the action covers, and then the uh, the permanent covers, the the market editions are more okay. This is more of a story based cover. If that makes sense. Like this is something that actually happened in the story, and or it's like an illustration that reflects story content more. And I, I feel I don't know. I just I like how that works out. I like that approach. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So yeah, hope you guys like this. Oh, this makes me so happy. These colors look so bright in person too. And this is also second edition, as you can see. So yeah, I have like the black and white covers as sort of like the, the copyright page here. And it says second edition. So there you go. Like that. And uh, yeah, extra content. Here is, I changed how the Nanarsa works. So remember in the campaign editions, when Ragna and Cosmere was speaking in Narsa, I had the translation right there on the page, like right there on the page, but I took it out and put the translations in the back because I kind of I kind of didn't like that. Um, it's fine if I did it once, but I think going forward, I'll, I mean, is it a pain? Because they're going to be speaking to Narsa a lot going forward. It might be a pain to like force people to go to the back. I think I might do like a translation card. To make your lives easier because I want to use the Narsa, but I also don't want to handhold people too much. So I think I'll just have a separate card so you don't have to flip through the back of the book. You just have a card that you can look at and I think that'll, that'll be better. It's just something about I don't I want the actual text on the page to be the Narsa because the point is the other characters don't under like Iskil and Yomi don't speak the Narsa. So it's just Cosme and Ragnar speaking to themselves and eventually other characters um get a decoder ring yeah no footers um i could build in footers if so for chapter two i didn't build in space to add footers that's also the problem but yeah going forward i could also build in footers so kind of like how the ghost in the shell comics just had <laughs> if you read the ghost in the shell comics the margins of it's like every page is just filled with like world building material and notes so i think um <laughs> I could do that or I could just do a card. I like the idea of a card, but yeah. I'm trying to find the balance between being immersive and indulging in my world building stuff, but also not making my readers go crazy because I want you guys to actually enjoy reading it. And it's like, I don't want it to be a painful experience. Um, okay, so that's 
Dana 22. Yeah. TC said you can make the Narsa cards fancy. Yeah, it could just be a free item that I give uh give out with the um the fiendish was I could just like print a postcard for really cheap and just you know have it included in the books from now on. So yeah, because um I think I'm just about finally about done laying out chapter three. I've done some pencils, but I stopped working on the pencils to refine the layouts. I've done so many iterations for chap the chapter three layouts. Um right now we're at 64 pages and um it's great. It's great. It does end on a cliffhanger, but we cover a, a ton of story content. There's several major reveals. It ends on a cliffhanger right before a battle scene. So chapter four will start right at the battle scene. And then we go through um, and we go through to the end of uh, the characters going to Dorvo. So that's my plan right now. But yeah, there's quite a bit of Nanarsa going forward, I realized, just because I, I felt like, oh, it's more natural um, if certain characters, like especially Kazumi and Ragna, they would speak that way to each other so yeah i'll do the cards i'll do a cards some notes are fine hmm? um jws i just got sent a ragna bookmark sent a couple weeks back and purchased a catch-up package was, was you supposed to get the bookmark yeah no it wasn't sent to you by mistake i sent an extra bookmark as a treat to australian and kiwi backers because you guys had to wait so long so i felt bad yeah so i told Bancroft to send you guys like a bookmark and a sticker. Yeah. Yeah. Cause the Australian and Kiwi, because the shipping is so ridiculous for Australia and New Zealand. We had to wait to the very end. So all the Australia backers were, um, were fulfilled last. And I just feel kind of bad because some people were really anxious. So there you go. It's fine. That's meant for you. You can keep the bookmark. Chapter three is down like you'll be I was so proud of it. Oh my gosh. I want to show you guys. I figured out, you know, when you kind of figure out a style, like I have, I figured out a style for Fiendish, especially in chapter two. I think I honed in on a certain style, but I think I refined that even more, if that makes sense. And I just had like a ton of breakthroughs in the designs because I swear to God. The designs for especially some of the antagonists have been killing me for years, for years. I couldn't figure out like, and like the main antagonist we don't see till four, but I'm like, I need to figure this out. We see some of the secondary antagonists in chapter three and like the designs, it just, I couldn't figure it out. It was always just generic well, fantasy person and I couldn't figure out how to push it. I got it. I got it. So I think you guys are going to love it. And all this other stuff, like art artisty stuff that I'm really proud of, like I'm using the environments more. I want to make a point for the fight scenes to use the environment. And when they're traveling, the environment changes. And I'm, um, you know, if you pay attention, like the landscape matters and everything. Let's be like really properly nerdy about it. So it's going to be great. Okay, okay we're going to get to chapter 2.5 soon. Da -da -da -da. Um main antagonist what just do like a blob <laughs> just just do like a shadow person and that's it sketch people farm drawing i don't know what that means bankrupt says are a handful to deal with <laughs> who australians <laughs> victor says how difficult was all the dialogue the caravan guy said in one that died in the previous ages not hard in case you can't tell i talk a lot so it's not hard to write a character that talks a lot but actually says nothing you know what's hard what's hard is writing fucking ragna like she's a hard because she's supposed to be smart she's like first yomi was hard in chapter two because she has i wanted to make sure her tone was right like, the accent was not too hard. I just had to go through and kind of, like, I wrote her dialogue normally. And I just went through and basically, like, fucked up the spelling because she has an accent. And I just consistently took out certain syllables. So it's like, oh, there's her accent. But that her tone was very important. And now in Chapter 3, uh, there's this thing where, okay, Ragna, she's kind of blunt and mean. But she's also very intelligent and educated and 
refined. So how do I do that? So I'm kind of thinking like she's she's kind of like an Ispoliad Yennefer, but less hoity-toity, right? Like in my head, Ragna has a like a posh British accent. Um, but so she's kind of like Yennefer, but she's also like she wouldn't mind, you know, getting dirty and traveling in the woods and stuff like that. Um, she's not super spoiled, but kind of like posh, a little mean, and she has to just be real real snappy sometimes and it's hard because when Cosmere insults people it's like the sarcasm um it's kind of when I write it I think it's funny just because he's so blunt but it's with Ragnar it's different anyways it's hard and it's hard to write characters that are smarter than you when I'm not smart as Ragnar she's supposed to be like a straight up prodigy so what you do is you just bash your head against the wall and revise and revise and revise until that character um, sounds smart and then you can say oh I just came up with that really awesome line off the top of my head except you didn't because it took forever to get you there and this person in the book would be able to think of that line in like two seconds no um, who's mean or cause a rag depends depends on the situation I think Ragna no Ragna yeah cause is actually not that mean he just says stuff like he he doesn't actually do anything if you, unless you deserve it, right? Yeah. Ragnar's Allie. Allie is not mean. You guys don't know Allie. Allie is not mean at all. In real life, she's nice as shit. She's such a sweet button. Um, okay, 2.5 books. Da da da. Look, here is a black and white cover. Da 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 da. da. It's um, actually, it's so shiny. Maybe I shouldn't have gone with a shiny lamination, but. Oh, well, it still looks good. So here you go. It's a floppy. I haven't, well, I lied. I was going to say I haven't printed a floppy in forever, but I did print a floppy for my bedeviled art books that I bring to conventions. Um, but yeah, like an actual floppy comic. It's been so long. But here you go. Look at that. Here is the um, front and back cover. I have this drawing by Rushbrook as the back cover. And I just did different color gradients for to match the different covers. Oh, and so here's the, um, oh my God, what am I doing? Here's the permanent cover. Oh, it's turned out really great too. <laughs> yeah, this is JWS, how many pages? This is 25 story pages. And then I have, uh, not including the credits page, one, two, three, four, five, six more pages of extra content. So... 30 pages interiors and um yeah here you go this is the 24 hour cover that is rare as you guys know these white on black covers are 24 hours only and it's kind of a thing every fiendish book will have the this as a um an initial like limited crowdfunding cover to reward early backers so hope you guys like that and 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 Next is, this is the main Fun My Comic cover. Look. Oh, it's so pretty. Ooh, there's a, I have a red light over there. That's, yeah. <laughs> it's, okay, it's reflecting, but hope you guys can see. Focus. Yeah. And he, he, if you can, if you look closely, the, co the uh, title has a little bit of transparency to it. I think that's nice and subtle. So there you go. Look. Woo! And the back cover is the same, but a different color gradient on that drawing. There you go. And the spread is like this. Yeah, I like um, I think it was a good choice to go with doing a floppy because there's a reveal moment in the story that actually landed right on the center spread. And I'm like, this is perfect. <laughs> I, I didn't even plan it this way. It just happened that the midsection of the story was the climax, right? And it's, I mean, that's just story structure. I'm like, oh, it's perfect. And it's like this really bloody, gnarly scene. So I think it turned out perfectly. Yay. Happy. And no typos so far. Good job, me. No typos. So there's the main on my comic cover. There you go. Oh, yeah. And this is out. <laughs> just hit myself in the face. <laughs> Oh, this is this is by Michael Rushbrook. The art is by Rushbrook, and I did the colors. So I'm gonna stab my eye out someday. There you go. 
Thank you. <laughs> and, mm, stop overthinking everything. Overthinking is my fucking middle name. <laughs> that was, I will never stop overthinking shit. If Allie finds a typo, she'll stab me. She will. She actually will. She gets so mad at typos, but it's good. Like, okay, Allie is so critical of typos and my my team, my colorist, and um, like everyone else on my team, but especially my colorist is like really blunt and um, is just like always has a problem with everything in a story. It's very hard to please. So I like having... <laughs> Harsh feedback on the team because I'm telling you, no one is going to be harsher on Phoenix than my own team, okay? And that's a good thing because it's annoying while I'm trying to get things to work, but that also means the product will be good and I'm sure that they will catch my shortcomings. We did have a couple of typos in like one and two that nobody caught and um, uh, I am going to forever punch myself in the face over that, but I fixed them now, so my apologies. Um, I really do try, but now I have Allie, so I think I'm going to have Allie straight up being a copy editor or whatever. I'll, I'll hire her to do something and check my spelling on Fiendish 3 um, to make sure everything is all right. I have Odin as a story editor, and I get feedback from my full team, but yeah, having a copy editor, I'm fine with paying for that as well. It, like, Listen, the more eyes you can get on a story, before it comes out, the better. Absolutely. So, and I think I'm going to have some people as test readers now, too. I found a couple people um, that I think will give good feedback. But, yeah. I put effort into this. Do you guys know? I want to make sure this is good. Here is... Na -na 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 -na, the Indiegogo cover! Ah, how romantic and stuff. Oh, my gosh. Hold on. Let me put the other cover down. Mm, 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 mm. Yay! Look! Oh, so pretty! That red light is annoying me. Here, I'll hold it like this. Okay. Look at that! The, um, the camera, I think it's because... Okay, here, let me move that light away. I think the camera doesn't show... It showed the blue really well, but the green isn't looking as bright. But in person, the green is actually really bright. So... At least on my screen, the green doesn't look as luscious as it does in reality. But yeah, these turned out great too. The um, like oh my, I love my printer. They the um, if you if you guys have done any printing, you'll know it's kind of always a gamble printing stuff because like con especially contrast, everything will print darker first of all. So whether you're doing shading or colors, everything will print darker. It's kind of like how when you paint paint will always dry darker than how it looks in the bottle the same with print with printing so um you kind of take that into account but also some printers will just fuck up your contrast and it just i mean like it's usually luckily for me it's mostly been um to the extent where i think readers wouldn't care but me as an artist i care and it pisses me it pisses me off i've had like some books print with just shit contrast and stuff was like really just you know really high contrast or really blown out i hated it but not here not here at all this is like the gradient he's all so pretty and nice so that's a ya cover listen listen that's fine i don't mind <laughs> the um I would say 2.5. It's not a YA book. There's like, if this was YA, then why suddenly got really bloody? But the um, but this would be a lower age range than the main books because I don't have anything super mature besides from some blood. So I would say like the main books, I would say 16, maybe 18. <laughs> These are not for kids. But this one. I don't know, 12 or 13, I think it's fine. So, but, um, but yeah, I don't know. I was, I was debating on, I think I would still tell people, well, I, I wouldn't recommend it for kids because, well, then kids would want to read the rest of the series and the rest of the series is really not meant for kids. It's not age appropriate. So, um, but yeah, anyways, here we go. Here's my fiendish YA cover. Thank you. So this is, um, Another tangent, but 
I was just thinking, I because I've been doing translations for Fiendish, right? I mentioned this, and the market is so different in other parts of the world, especially in Asia. Just what people like is totally different. So when I show people in um, when I show people, like I took some of my Fiendish books back to Taiwan, right? And, well, it is this cover. It's right behind me. But also here, let me pull up the actual book. So here's the campaign edition of Fiendish 2, right? So campaign edition and um, permanent edition right here. Look. So same book, different covers. They don't like this. They like this. They like pretty. I mean, this isn't really peaceful, but it's more... It's not... It's like prettier, more story, character focus, a little calmer, so to say. And if you look at cover design in Japan and Taiwan, there's a stark difference. Like the same book, the cover design will be different. Oh, I remember um, there's this, there was a side-by-side -side comparison of How to Train Your Dragon. So the How to, How to Train Your Dragon poster in America was like action-y and it was hiccup and toothless. Just like, let's go to battle. And in Japan, it was like this cute little, oh, let me touch his nose. Like petting the dragon on a pure white background because they like cute soft things. Like totally different, dude. Like there's an exception. There are exceptions, of course, of stuff like Akira or Berserk. But I think those... um those works almost gravitate or appeal more to Westerners than most, most of uh, the majority of in the Asian audience. So um, I just, it was the total tangent, but I just realized these covers will probably do better in, in Asia. And I don't know. I'll, I'm a long way from deciding if I want to like do a whole different editions. I just want to do a digital release in Chinese for now. So we'll see. Um, oh, did I get a super chat? Uh, is him. Um, the wave blur. Hold on, let me try to pull this up. The wave blur. Thank you for five dollars. Thank you very much. Will you work with the Ripperverse and use Ripasen for fulfillment for your future books? I'll work with Ripa. I already work with Eric July. Yeah, I've done some things for him. Eric's cool. Uh, I don't know about Ripasen. I already use RJ, and I really like using RJ. So I don't um see a reason to uh to switch over. But I think Ripasen is a great idea because Lord knows some people need help with fulfilling. I remember fulfilling my books on my own. It was an absolute pain in the ass. But yeah, RJ with Critical Blast, I already have a working relationship with him. And um, I like his services. And I'm, I have like, I'm also at this point warehousing with him. I just have a ton of these Fiendish 2 and Fiendish 1. And even the permanent editions for... 2.5. I just have most of the books over in his warehouse, and he'll be doing all my fulfillment, even my store orders. So, and I'm happy with that. But yeah, um, more than happy to work with Eric. You're vampire wise, super bloody. I guess so. I guess so. Yeah. So, uh, Fiendish is now a YA series, guys. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, it's not. Um, Comics Legend asked if I would mind having a blank cover variant to do sketches i am considering that yes yeah, someone has asked me i don't i am considering that i don't know how many people would be down for that but i might as well offer it because i can um i can see having i'm sure i can work out with my printer because they're great to uh to find a kind of cover stock and it's, I mean, it might be weird because these books are, they're perfect bound. It'll be like a sketch cover, perfect bound book. But I'm sure we can work something out, find a type of paper that's easy to draw on and have a variant that is, um, can be a, a sketch cover. Hold on, hold on, you guys. I have an idea. I have had this idea when I do the omnibus for fiendish so you guys know how i do leather work and pyrography when i do the hard covers when i have like my collected editions for fiendish 
which I dream of every day and I can't wait for it to happen. It's like, oh, the holy grail in the sky for me. I just want this leather bound omnibus, like the Berserk Deluxe Editions in my hands. And if I have it, I'll know I've made it. Um, so when I, when I do that, I was thinking maybe there would be a way of doing blank leather covers and I could do pyrography, custom pyrography. This is years down the line, but do you guys like that? It will not, probably won't be $29.99. That will probably be really expensive. I'll try to keep the price down though. Um, I have no idea how much that would, that would uh, cost. Berserk music? Yes. I've gone too far? Why? What did I do? 11 by 17 pyrography stretch goal? <laughs> I don't know about that. That'll be a lot of work. I mean, if you want to pay me for it, I'll do it. That's like a gigantic piece, though. Yeah. Um, custom part. No, not for two thousand pieces. That's not happen. But yeah, um, happening. Yeah. But I got destroyed. What was I talking about? Right. Um, sketch covers for Fiend Industry. I would consider that. And people have asked for CGC graded books as well. Sure. Why not? Yeah. I actually know someone who uh, has sent a Fiendish book in or is sending a Fiendish book in to be graded. So I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. I never, I don't think about these things. I'm like, really? You want to preserve my comic? Oh, it makes me so happy. But yeah, that would be kind of cool. So I think I'll offer that because I might as well offer it. And just how I'll just print however many people order on the campaign for Fiendish 3. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got the sniffles. I'm sorry. I was, I need to show the, um, the final cover! Right. One more cover, everybody. Where is it? I lost track of everything. Dun dun dun! And here! The perfect YA cover. A dead animal and a, and a half-crazed boy covered in blood. YA, everybody. <laughs> so here, this is the, uh, the permanent cover. This wasn't on a campaign, but if you order 2.5 on the store, which you can order it on the store now. So I still have it set to pre-order, but I'm going to change it tomorrow uh, because it's not pre-order anymore. We're fulfilling. So if you order this, it'll immediately ship out. Um, we'll be shipping, starting shipping all through this week. And by the way, so the, um, the enamel pins and the pendants for 2.5 are still in production so we'll just start shipping book only orders first so we'll, we're still going to start fulfillment and when the uh pendants and enamel pins come in then those orders will go out yep and z says thorfinn cover i guess he does kind of look like thorfinn i didn't have his braids showing because Cosmere has these braids so i'm like he does kind of look a little too much like thorfinn doesn't he i think i'm gonna Maybe in, like, the second edition, I'll add a braid. I'll be like, this is not Thorfinn. <laughs> oh, I don't mind. I love Vinland Saga, so whatever. Um, yeah, I'm very proud of this cover. He's so, so pretty. Oh. And here's the back cover. So the whole thing is like this. Yeah. And this will be permanent forever. The forever cover for 2.5. So there you go. Yeah, Marumi linked the shop. Thank you. Uh, the shop is fiendishcomic.com slash shop. Nice and straightforward. And if you go there, I also I recently revamped the website too. So it'll be fun to check out. Go take a look at the new landing page. I have some content up on the blog. And I reorganized the shop and also have 2.5 up on there. And you can just buy... 1, 2, and 2.5 from the shop. So, um, go take a look. I pay for it as a website every month, so please go buy some stuff from me and help me out. <laughs> hey, Max! Hello! What's up? Max says the colors are great on these. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm glad. I'm, I'm, yeah, my printer did such a great job. I'm glad you like them. They look even better in real life. So nice. Yeah! So yeah, there you go. Um, hope you guys like it, and I really hope you guys enjoy 2.5. It's uh, it's gonna be awesome. All right, FK says I have a super chat. Oh, okay, hold on. I read the super chat. Super chat. Oh. 
Starkey says the books will survive World War III. <laughs> Hi. I hope we all survive World War III, by God. I don't even know what's going to happen. I don't want to think about it. Um, the Wave Blur for $10. Thank you so much. Uh, Wave, Wave Blur says, working on my own graphic novel now. I'm just re-educating myself and drawing fundamentals and finding my own style. I really love your work. Thank you. You're an inspiration. I hope to meet you one day. Oh, thank you. Oh, well, I'm inspired that you're working on your graphic novel. I remember being there. I know exactly what that's like. So keep at it. And yeah, if you are ever at a convention, I'm going to be doing a few shows this year, starting with Heroes. I hope we get to meet. And I love to come, uh, I love to talk about comics if I do run into you at a show. And best of luck. Best of luck. More people making comics is good. The more comics, the better. Toxic Player 7 for five. Thank you so much. Would you be open to work on a new comic book project with my band, Vicky's Dream? I don't have time for other comics outside of Fiendish right now. I'll do covers. Like, I've, I'll do covers and pinups. Um, technically, I could do short comics, but I already am maxed out for this year, I think, because I'm doing, like, a seven-pager with Ali and Perdomo. So I don't... I don't want to get distracted from Fiendish. So I just, I don't do interiors, but I'll basically do everything else. But if you could use a cover or any illustrations, I'd be more than happy to collaborate with you guys. And either way, thank you so much for asking. I appreciate it. Thank you. And I guess check out Vicky's Dream, everybody. Yeah, thank you guys for the super chats. Um, let's see. I think that's it. All right. <laughs> Stall until Vaughn falls asleep. Well, he doesn't sleep either. I don't know what he... <laughs> He's up all fucking night as well. Nobody around here sleeps, guys. Absolutely nobody. Doesn't happen. I just took a nap. Like, my sleep schedule is totally fucked. I, like, take naps in the evening, evenings and the mornings, and then I'm just up all night. Like, I'm naturally nocturnal. Everybody tells me it's bad for my health, but I'm like, but I get enough sleep. Like when when I was was crunching on work, I don't. But you know, the past couple of days, I've been you know, I've been lazy as fuck. I've just been lying around all day. I just like to be awake at night. It's nicer. Oh, so last night I was up all night recording. So yeah, um, right. The pins. Okay, so if you guys missed the pins, here you go. This is just the um, the oh, this is a work in progress. So. These are already, this is pretty nice, but I, uh, we're going to do another iteration of the pins because, so, a, a couple of the lines were off, so we're going to do a new mold, and also, I want to try and get the factory to do a, uh, you know those pins that are just completely flat? So, the production process is different than these. So I'm going to, we're going to do a version that is just smooth. It's like a different, I don't know what it's called in English, but um, in Chinese it's like fa lang, wei zang. But it, um, I think that might look better. I did my regrowth pins like this, this kind of raised line look, because I thought it looked more rustic. But for this, it might look better differently. So there you go. But yeah, this is the, um, this is the test. And look how... Look how gigantic this is. There's like two pins on the back. This thing is a uh, jumbo. So when I said oversize, I wasn't kidding. Now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, you know, maybe I can do another version where it's like spins. Because oh, I wish I thought of this earlier because it has this plate on the back. I could separate it. But yeah, it's too fancy. I didn't, whatever. We're, we're already um, in production. So yeah, there you go. Those are the pins. And here are the pendants. That is a... Uh, glowing trapezoid that you guys can't see here there you go these are the metal pendants focus jesus okay there look the uh the final these are already going into production because these are good to go so um the mass production has, has already started the final ones will be a little darker and more matte i don't want them to be so shiny but yeah, otherwise, these are final. And I also got, I think I'm going to, like, add some red thread. I just got this 
So you'll get a string to actually wear it. So it'll look just like Cosmere's pendant in the story. Um, and yeah, this is story relevant. You'll see how Cosmere got this pendant and what it means in 2.5. So there you go. <sighs> what do you guys think? <laughs> I don't remember showing this on Wednesday, but I guess I did. <laughs> Sorry, this is my pendant is staring at me. Staring into your soul. Is it a red thread of destiny? What? Like in your name? <laughs> I don't know what that is. Oh, Red Thread is a podcast? I have no idea. Hmm. Yeah, let's see. Uh, I think... Oh, you like the embossed pins? Yeah, I like them too, but I'm, I'm just going to do a test with that other style to see how it looks. Um, yeah, that, mean, pro that probably means people who order the pins have to wait a while longer. Um, but hopefully it's not too much trouble. It's, uh, I want the pins to look good. I want to make sure these look good. And I would rather do some more iterations. So uh, my apologies for the wait. But these are going to look awesome. And I am determined to make them look amazing. All right. I think, uh, I think I should, like, start drawing or something. Is that a good idea? Should I draw something? <laughs> like I said I would. Maybe I should do that. Hmm. Oh, Wendy Goon's podcast. Oh, I didn't know you had a podcast. I don't... I like Wendy Goon. I don't follow him that closely. Cool. Wendy Goon's cool. Hi, Wendy Goon. Comments Legend asks, when is the launch for Fiendish 3? I don't think I'm going to launch until next year. And the reason for that is I want to make sure a lot of the work is done. And I also want to plan chapter four along with three not work on it in tandem so to say i mean three is huge 64 pages it's about the same size as chapter two but i want to do the layouts for four because three and four are kind of like part one and part two so they have to connect and everything has to flow so i want to you know at least get the layouts for four done and i also want the majority of the work to be done before I launch. So that does mean a longer wait. I don't know if that's good or bad, but I think it'll be fine. I think it'll be fine. Because, I mean, I remember, you know, I, I've heard really you shouldn't wait too long between campaigns. People lose interest, but I'm not going away. Like, I'm doing a lot of shows. You know, I'll be showing work for Fiendish. Um, you guys can always sign up for an email list. On the website, fiendishcomic.com. So you'll get an email when it does launch. Like, I'll send out emails leading up to the launch. And I'm trying to be better about updating people through the email list. So I'll probably be sending out, like, email list exclusive art as I work on 3 as well. Um, just like I post some exclusive stuff for the blog. So, yeah. I think, I think that'll work out fine. I'd rather have more of the work done before launching because I hear a lot of people being frustrated over having to wait a long time and I think um, if I'm my experience with Fiendish 2 was obviously I think it turned out well but I do there was a crunch period that drove me nuts and I think if I set does that make sense? I think if, um, with a live campaign, okay, so right now my, if m my goal is to have the majority of the work done before, say, like, February next year, then I think I'll be able to, to do a better job. I'm not as rushed on the art, and, but also I'm incentivized, I'm incentivized to work at a steady pace, but also make sure the art looks good, because that's a, um, because I want to have the majority of stuff finished. Does that make sense? But when I'm when the campaign is already live, it's really stressful to promote and draw. And then when the campaign is closed and that print date is breathing down on me, that is really, really horrible. And I feel like I just lose my mind and I wish I could polish my art more, but I don't. I mean, there is a point of 
finish not perfect that all artists learn and there will always be that you know you can't be a complete perfectionist with comics but i want to try this different scheduling with chapter three to see if the artwork turns out better because i won't be just like crunching for the second half of it which is what happened with chapter two um there was a lot of crunch there so yeah it gives you more time to promote yeah yeah i think it'll be fine i heard some people say that oh it's um i'll make less money because i don't have a campaign that's open so I'd, I'd rather have you guys have to wait a shorter period than just, well, let me have a campaign open for a long time. I think it'll, like, the backers not having to wait as long as being happier is a priority. So, I'll be fine. Hey, Hypnotic! Oh, hello! Hi, what's up? Good to see you around. Hypnotic has an awesome channel, and he had me on, like, a month ago. Um, it was an awesome podcast, so everyone go check him out. Podcast, panel, show. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We just talked about, like, gaming and pop culture stuff, and it was great. I met him on Flashcast. Hello, Hypnotic. Thank you for joining us. If the work is done in um, eight months? Eight months? I guess it's about eight months-ish. Yeah, I think I think it'll be better. Um, it's funny for you to create book three, so people don't mind backing and waiting. I've heard some people... Well, What's important is when you set a fulfillment date, you meet it as well. Um, but yeah, also for for various reasons. If I if I wanted to launch chapter three, I don't want to do it at the end of the year again because I've launched both two point five and chapter two towards the end of a year. Did two launch towards the end of a year? It was towards the second half. Um, yeah, that didn't turn out well. I mean, obviously the funding turned out well, and I'm very grateful. But for for other reasons, mostly, like, taxes will kick your ass, okay? Um, yeah, it's... And I would rather launch towards the beginning of the year. I mean, it doesn't make too much of a difference if you file correctly, but I think it's just easier for my records if I keep the production and the campaign all in one year. I'm like, I'm shocked people haven't thought of this. It just makes sense. So I would rather launch towards the early part of next year and just have a lot of the work done. There you go. Um, some people work better under stress. Oh, don't worry, I'm under stress all the time. And I I think I work pretty well under stress. I I like having pressure. I really do. It was, like, the best stuff comes out when you're under pressure. But there is a um there is also that line between you you're under pressure. And you're, it's not the pressure that's the problem, okay? That's not what I'm saying. The problem is, well, this has to go to print. I literally have to just, like, do just this is good enough. Like, I don't like doing that. And I think I'm, I'm able to make something look good even with that mentality because, I you know, I've been doing comics for so long. But I don't like getting to that point. Like, I think even in Fiendish 2... There are just a couple of panels. It, it wasn't like most of it. I spent an inordinate amount of time on all the details, rendering everything, obviously. But I think the couple of pages where I felt rushed were a point of regret for me. And for three, I want to push the art even further. So if I want the art to be even better, then I want none of that well i have to just let this go and and not like really push the art and think about it and make it good right you know what i mean like the problem isn't the stress i'm constantly stressed <laughs> I, I don't know the meaning of not stressed <laughs> that is totally fine god oh, i appreciate you too huh? <laughs> we find our companies that people have extra money I might, I was thinking of running a different, or another campaign this year, but not of three. Um, I don't know yet. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I'd rather, uh, I'd rather just stick with the plan I have so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it hurts when you had to push out something when it's not really ready when, for the world to see it. Um, I don't think I've done that. 
It's just, well, I wanted to detail something and add an extra texture, but I don't have time to do that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm very, very picky with the art. And you guys will see. When you see chapter three, you'll know what I mean. Like, I've, I have a, I have a whole bunch of other stuff figured out. There's a new way I want to draw the runes and everything. Could I do 1.5 this year? Maybe. Maybe. I do have a story. And if Rushbrook has the time, and if he doesn't, I guess I can find someone else, but I would go to Rushbrook first, and he's fast, then maybe. Would you guys be open to that? Because I didn't want to do 2.5 stories back to back. I thought that was like, probably that would be annoying for backers, right? So I was going to tack on a 1.5 story to chapter 3. Because I have, okay, I have a 1.5 story that is a flashback to Yomi's past with the caravan. And it's really cool. And I do want to do it. But, um, like, are, are, you, are you guys me annoyed if I do, like, two, like, a 1.5 right after 2.5? Or be like, where's the main book? I mean, the main book is coming next year. But, um, yeah, let me know. I'll put it, I'll put up a poll. And then I'll actually open Photoshop and invite Vaughn and we'll start drawing. Okay. <laughs> Yomi's pass. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um... It, it's a flashback to her time with the caravan. It's actually from the perspective of another character, but it's, um, it's kind of, it's weird. It's, um, it takes place in Drakia. I'm not going to spoil everything, but it's kind of a heisty story. It's cool. It's cool. It's really different than the other Fiendish stories, but we get to know Yomi and some of the other characters from the caravan well. And I think that's important because I realized, like, I didn't, I want a chapter one to be really action-y. So I totally didn't spend enough time with the caravan at all. And it's like, oh, these guys die. But you don't really care because you don't know them. It's just like this one fat guy that talks a lot. So I want the readers to get to know these characters, even retroactively. But I want it to be natural because I want it to be within the framing of an interesting story. And we get to see Yomi when she was younger with some of the other caravan members. And one of the caravan members survive. So he's coming back far in the future. So, um, and that matters. So I I think um, it's, it's better to, uh, like, the story will be better with 1.5 introduced at this point. Also... There's like a couple of things that I think would be, um, would, it's kind of like how when you read 2.5, you'll see what I mean. There are some things that I establish in here that'll matter in three, right? Like just small things, mostly world building. Same with 1.5. So yeah, there you go. Adam, hi, hey, what's up? JW spoilers. Not really. Not really, no. That's just. That's the general vibe of the story, but I'm not going to tell you what it's actually about. Jeff, so you sounded good for a Wait, is it- does this sound better? Have I been sounding like shit this whole time because I never talk into my mic? <laughs> I'm so horrible. I go back and listen to my streams and I sound- I'm just like- because I never talked to my mic. <laughs> um, he, he lived. He thinks he get rid of me. Oh, that's, that'd be fucked up. Slightly fucked up. Awesome. All right. Yay. Um, another point five just means more breathing room. Okay. Well, if you guys really don't mind. Okay, I'm going to put up a poll. And then I'll invite um, the young lad and start doing some drawing here, okay? Then we're going to talk about another book. Um, <laughs> other than fiendish, <laughs> you sure you don't need to hear me any louder? Am I loud enough? I'm not sure I'm loud enough. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> okay, I'll 
I'll stop doing that. Poll! Poll time, poll time. How do I do a poll? I never do this. Um, start a poll. Okay. Should I run Bean Dish 1.5 this year? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Let me know, chat. Give me feedback. I am here to listen. The customers come first. Tell me your opinions. All right. The poll is live. Dan, what's up? Hey, Dan, you want to hang out? <laughs> you just noticed? Goblin Girl by Dan Plagle. Yes. Everyone go check out Goblin Girl. Dan, uh, it's good to see you around. I know you're... Um, are you doing okay? <laughs> no pressure, but if you want to hang out, let me know. Um, you're more than welcome to come on. It's really good to see you. It's really good to see you around. Okay, um, people are saying 1.5 is good. Cool! That's good to know! I'm super paranoid of doing things that'll, like, piss off backers. That's why I'm really careful with stuff like, well, now that I'm doing digital releases for Fiendish, I want to make sure that they're... I found a platform that has a paywall, and also the releases are way behind the physical books, because I want to give the physical book backers priority and give them time to read the books first. So, I'm just like, I don't know. Backers are important, and customers are important. Like, obviously, but I I feel like I don't want to come across like, oh, I'm just doing a bunch of side stories. Where's the main book? But it's going to be fun, and people really like Yomi, and I love Yomi. So, yeah. Uh, keep the interest or finish alive. Okay. I'll do that. Let's see. What's the poll so far? Oh, my God. 80, almost 80 percent yes okay i guess this is happening well there you go um i will talk to rushbrook you guys just got him more work i was gonna hire him anyway so um yeah i'll send you the link dan un momento i'll send you the link on facebook okay join me join me join me There you go. Listen. Listen, sir. Listen. <laughs> I I still it still hasn't registered sometimes that people want my books. <laughs> I'm very grateful, don't get me wrong, but I'm like I don't realize I mean it's great and I don't want it to ever stop, but um sometimes I'm like what? People want my comics? I spent so long drawing comics and nobody was interested. People want to buy my stuff now? Okay. Vaughn, you have the link too. All right, let's actually start working on some Phenomenova and reveal this cover that I'm going to finish inking before the book launches in five days. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. TC says, I'm, I'm a George R. R. Martin. Well, I don't know. I think he's a way better writer than me. I hope I'm more disciplined than him, though. <laughs> no, he's a really good writer. That's, uh, that's high praise. I appreciate it. Thank you for the links. Yay. Um, uh, uh, um, okay. Let me pull up Photoshop. Hey, Dago Solo, what's up? Dango Solo, you missed the books. Here, I'll flip through them real quick. Look, the Fiendish books are here. The 2.5 books. Dun, dun, dun. Hold on, not that one. These are here. This one that is the, uh, technically the Dango Solo cover because he gets the original art for this one or the original sketch that this was based on. And here's... The Fun My Comic cover. Fun My Comic campaign cover. And here is the black and white cover. Yeah. Look at that. Isn't that nice? 
And also here's the um here's the permanent chapter two cover. They're here. They're here. My baby. They're here. So happy. Oh, they're so pretty. And here's the back. Pretty. Oh. Okay. There you go. Da da. Alright. Yes. I'm so glad that these are here and they're done. Um I hope you guys like them too. I know you guys will enjoy 2.5. Can't wait. Okay. Black and white is your favorite? I love the black and white covers. They're fun to design. I actually have all of them planned out. They might change as the story progresses, but I do have all the uh all the uh, sorry. The further point um not point point five point. The um I do also have the point five chapters planned out, but I have the uh, the black and white covers all planned out and everything. I have like, cause they're also really useful. Like they look great on merch. So I'm like, oh, I'm so glad I decided to do these. They're uh, they're wonderful on just shirts and mugs and stuff. Please title it as Naoko song. I should have thought of that. Yes, I should have thought of that. JRM can pour out books besides the one people want. Yeah. He's been working. He's not unproductive. You know, he's he does a lot of stuff. He supervises House of the Dragon. He's he did a bunch of the world building for Elden Ring. Was it Elden Ring? No, was it? It was Elden Ring, right? Um, I don't play video games. And he did a bunch of other stuff. He's been working on what what do you what do you want to call them? Wild cards, right? Like he's writing, just not writing wins. So, and I'm sure it's hard. I'm sure it's a very difficult endeavor because these are very complicated books. But by God, it's been 11 years, sir. <laughs> My soul is tortured. 11 years. 11 years. He did the world building for it, though. He didn't do, like, the writing. I think they hired him to do the world building and then I heard he just built the world and then they like the actual writers and game designers were like not fucked it up as in messed it up but they purposely destroyed it as part of the story right does that make sense don't go full george on us i'll try well it depends on what kind of george the the deep connectivity like everything is connected and like all kinds of character minutia everywhere and cool character that George or like never finish your main books George because these are different Georges <laughs> George if you see this I love your work please give me wins Dan is here hold on let me put on my headphones hello sir hello my friend, hello hold on, I can't hear you give me a second ah! okay can you hear me Da, da, da. Is this working? My audio? Uh, speaker? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Dan, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're a little quiet, but I'll turn your mic. Oh, your mic is already maxed. Yeah. I, think I thought that might happen. Make it louder. Oh, Leroy's in chat. Leroy says, I heard there's drawing. There will be. Right now. Right. Starting now. I've been I've been uh rambling about my book for far too long. The drawing starts right now. I can I, I can be disciplined, guys. I will not George you. Time to get to work. All right, let me share my Photoshop. No problem. It's fine. I know you have technical everyone's having technical difficulties. Vaughn is yeah. too get your shit together, guys. <laughs> just kidding you're fine uh i wouldn't i would not look good with a beard i don't know i think i should grow one it might work out well i'm considering it i'm heavily considering growing a beard um i think uh i think i could pull it off right wait this is not the newest version Give me a second. 
Oh, and I did see there are some gifted memberships. Thank you. Hold on. I'll uh, shout them out in just a second. I'm trying to find the newest version of this file. Driving me nuts. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Okay. All right. Present. There you go. That's what I'm working on. Uh, Barb Rogers, Miss Solar Terror. Thank you so much for gifting one membership. Thank you, Barb, as always in chat, gifting memberships. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. And uh, I think, were there more memberships? Let's see. A uh, Barb Rogers gifted another one. Thank you so much. And FKA gifted a membership as well. Thank you. I very much appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. And that's about it. There you go. There's, um, so here's my cover for, uh, for Phenomenova. That is Mr. Von Coleman's book. Master Alliance, member for three months. Hey, shout out to you. Thank you very much for being a member. Chris is here. What's up, Chris? How are you doing? Hello, Chris. Chris, do you want to hang out? You're invited. You're more than welcome to just hang out. I'm just doing some drawing, chatting. Um, shooting the shit, talking about comics. Vaughn, I saw you pop in the back room, but now I can't add you because your computer's fucking up. Like no. audio. Oh, you're so quiet. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even hear you talking. You're so quiet. I know. It's just audio. Okay. I, I probably have to go. That's not oh, okay. Well, it sucks. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Right. Maybe, uh, I'll figure it out at some point. Yeah, we'll figure something out. Yeah, I know you're probably not at your home setup anyways, so no I'm worries at all. at all. Yeah. We'll, we'll catch up. I'll catch you on Facebook. We gotta catch up. I'll talk to you later. Yeah, okay. Later. Bye. Thanks for popping in. Bye. Yeah, Dan's super quiet. I can barely hear him. I have his audio turned up all the way. Um, everyone go check out Goblin Girl. Goblin Girl is still live on Indiegogo. That's Dan's book. And, um, you know, Dan has been dealing with um, some health problems. He recently just got out of surgery and he was, he's still been sick for a while. So hopefully he's on the mend and I'm sure he would appreciate some help. And uh, you can back his book and that would be a lot of help. It's also an awesome fantasy book with gigantic labubas. Here, let me just pull it up real quick. Instead of just like, Running my mouth about it. I haven't pulled a goblin girl in a while. Goblin girl. Let's see. Goblin girl. Here. Da da da. Uh, mute Vaughn telling his mic is working. No, no, I can't add you, Vaughn. No, he said he's having some difficulties. It's fine. We'll look at Goblin Girl in the meantime. Here. There you go. Yeah, this is Dan's book. Still live on Indiegogo. Uh, if you like fantasy and boobas and uh, lots and lots of action and blood, then I'm sure you're going to love this as well. It's drawn by Dan, written by Dan, and also colored. It's colored by Billy Basco. If you guys know him, he's cool people's. Um, he's recoloring the whole book, basically, because he, he figured out, he's got this, like, super painterly fantasy style, and, um, like, the book has taken a while, but it's obvious because Dan has been sick, so, um, hopefully that's, that's totally understandable. And Billy has taken the time to recolor it, so it's gonna look amazing. I've seen the current work he's been doing on it, it looks super good, and here are some of the interiors. Yeah. It's like, it's like really painterly. And look at Dan's paneling. It's so dynamic. Uh, here, let me post a link in chat. Goblin girl. There you go. There, there's a link. So if you guys want to back this, there is still time. By the way, there's a lot of cool stuff on this campaign too. Um, I know it looks like kind of raunchy, but Dan says that it is PG-13. There is no actual nudity. She just has like really giant boobs, but there is no actual nudity. Um, FYI. 
And there's a bunch of cool tchotchkes, like a view master and a uh, t-shirt and all kinds of like these extra cards and stuff. It's a lot of cool stuff. And he has a black and white edition for those of you who like black and white books. So yeah, there you go. Check out this book. I'm sure you guys are going to love it. Uh, look who we have. My God. What's going on? How you Jesus doing? Christ. What? Can you figure out how computers work, bro? Yeah, I turned it. You know what I did? I just, uh, Yeah, you I turn closed. it off and turn it on again? No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that usually, that works, huh? Yeah. I was just drinking some coffee. Thank God I, uh, decided on another coffee with, uh, Time yeah, I can't so decide between coffee or booze right now. I'm like, I just dang, drank dang. some coffee and I'm gonna just double dang, fist dang. coffee and and booze because that's good for your health. Did you that get the uh, <laughs> the stuff I sent you with the uh, the character update? Yeah. Okay, just curious. Yeah, you want to pitch your book? Talk about Phenomena. Nova. Tell everybody what the fuck this is. So we are less than one week from launching, guys. Phenomenova is set 20 wow. years after World War III. And you know what's funny is the covers, like, unintentionally have been in, like, as they've come out, have been in chronological order of the events. So this oh, is yeah, the last one funny. with the fight for the villain. The last one, I don't know if you saw Juju just turned in her cover. Um, uh, but it's basically mm -hmm. said 20 years after World War III and follows the idealistic son of a war hero who's struck by lightning while holding a mysterious crystal and he strikes out on his own to become a superhero in a makeshift costume like the heroes that came before him. But he finds himself in way over his head fighting a supervillain at a nuclear reactor that's totally out of his league. All right. And uh, I yeah, obviously want it to a... be a grand world, but... It was going to be a team book, hence the Phenomenova is the name of the team. And it will be, but issue one, I wanted to focus on, like, one hero's journey, you know, and the main character. Uh, I felt like if you're paying, taking a chance on a book, I want to give you a, a story that I felt was self-contained enough, um, you know? That's a I good thought, idea. Well, it's... I don't know, you I thought think so, it's, right? It's self-contained as in you, there is, like, a beginning, middle, and end, but also, clearly, there's a room for continuation so yeah it's good yeah booze um, to work on this cover yeah i do think now i'll need booze i'm gonna go get some uh some beer I think that'll make my night better <laughs> that goes to last why a nuclear reactor that's a good question so that's a great question so um basically uh i i won't answer certain things but it, initially it was a bank heist and what happened was i got feedback um at the time i was working at uh phenom comics it's where i got my, my first ever published work was here um and at the time i had um you know was pitching some for, stuff for feedback and the world war three post world war three was kind of an idea that came a bit later and i remember someone was like you know i uh someone was saying why don't you do something more interesting for the world? If you're going to do a heist, we've seen villains do bank heists. For, and there's always a practical reason. No matter what your character's motivation, they need money, right? Why not do something more interesting that says something about the world? And I thought about it a lot. Um, and I was like, okay, well, it's the future. What's the future of, you know... And I remember learning about an environmental science class about, like, nuclear reactors... Right. And that like actually contrary to popular belief, they are basically the best form of energy in every way, unless you're like on an island like Japan with frequent earthquakes and maybe not. But like it, there are safer forms that well. are coming up with being developed. And, uh, you know, it was like my I asked to talk to a friend who's actually my assistant editor who knows a lot about nuclear technology is a big science nerd and i was like hey man uh what would they do in the future for nuclear reactors are there any safer forms and he, he and i had hours conversations on the phone he'd send me documents and uh it was like we ended up deciding on a you don't get all of the details in issue one but I'll, I'll give you some behind the scenes why not um it's going to be a nuclear fusion reactor uh basically what it is is there's like this part in the center 
and all these giant lasers pointed to it, concentrated, that create a reaction. Because he was sending me all these, like, futuristic reactors and, like, just concept art. And I was like, holy shit. That looks so you wanna, cool. You want to pull up your campaign? I'm going to go get a beer and you can actually pull what up your uh, sign-up page. You that much? What? I'm, fuck, I'm fucking with you. I was like, oh, did I get drove her down? Yes, <laughs> you did. Pull up. Yeah, I need booze to deal with you. Oh, yeah. no, just pull up your sign-up page. It'll help. All right. It'll help deal with the pain. Wasn't it we'll love to live in Chernobyl today? It's a natural paradise. Well, I'm sure you can figure out a way. Actually, probably not. I don't know. Are you um, allowed to be there? You can. Yeah. I've seen but YouTubers like, is it a do good it. I but like, is it a good idea? Yeah, you know, it's... For the views, it maybe. Probably is, it probably is fine. It, what? For the views. I'm already mutated enough. No, for the views. <laughs> I'm saying. Oh, for the views. Yeah, I mean, if you really think about it, it the contamination really depends on the type of nuclear waste or the uh, the bomb, right? I, I was literally just watching a video on this because, of course, we're staring World War Three down the barrel. Wow! So that's all that I see on YouTube now. Fun stuff. The world's ending. Yeah. Um, what What's going but, on with that? I kind of wasn't was working that whole time. What? The... You, you don't. No. I really don't. I mean. I don't want to talk about anything controversial, but um, I it's hopefully nothing. It's hopefully nothing. It's I'm hoping it's just posturing, right? Because you have to retaliate, but it um, but like I hope it stops here because it'll look bad on Iran if they don't hit strike back and stuff. And I'm hoping that's just it. I don't think anyone wants to escalate, but somebody could also be always be an egotistical asshole. Oh please! I don't want. I don't want World War Three. Uh, did Vaughn tr actually trigger World War Three just to make this market this comic? No, it was I him didn't. pulling the streams this whole time. No, it was actually in my comic. It specified that it was the Chinese that did it. Specifically, well, like one villain. We're not far off from that either, in my opinion. Like, just everything's going to shit. Well, it was more and specifically. I'm just caught right in the middle of everything. It's awesome. It's so awesome. Hey, Dave Brink, what's up? Good what's morning, going on, Dave. It's all. It's all very stupid. It's all very stupid. Um, let's hope not, Snarky. Let's hope not. I want to finish my comic. Well, let me finish my comic first, and then I can. Uh, <laughs> then I then I can uh, <laughs> go. Um, see the electric elves or what the fuck ever you see on dmt all right here i'm gonna get some booze i'll be right back so so anyway guys um no you can't blame me for this like you you can't blame me i didn't cause it but uh i did cause an artist to draw some really cool stuff so imagine i would love to after phenomenova issue one obviously i came up with the idea for phenomenova right and it would be like, I'd, I'd get feedback. I've always been getting feedback from people. And then, of course, professionals too. Rainy gave some great feedback. And I remember I had a friend who wasn't even into superhero comics, but a few friends go, why don't you do something different? And a lot of the ideas I got were like, oh, make it darker, make it edgier, make it more, maybe the main character is more of an asshole. And, you know, those weren't in line with what I wanted because I still wanted the idealistic heart of a superhero story, right? I wanted it to be a true blue superhero story. But, okay, what are more inventive things? And World War th being making it post World War Three was actually really cool, because it allowed for like a um, it, it allowed for like a a background that was different, and I it played with the idea of legacy and living up to something greater. And this double page, these two double page spreads are early on in the book, right? Um, and I wanted to make the heroes that fought in World War III something that's just, like, you want to aspire to. Uh, and I think this image alone, when I did this, um, holy crap, I got so many sign-ups from this image alone. Uh, even had people in person say, dude, I signed up right when I saw this. Um, and uh, as I was planning the World War III background, I was, uh, like, as I was planning out the the world history and how world war three unfolded and who the heroes that fought in it and the villains i was like this in and of itself is a story so at some point 
I will be telling that story. Well, Phenomenova is going to be ongoing, and then I'll have like a limited mini series called Crusader Corps. That's the name of the superheroes. These are just some of the heroes that fought during World War III. There were more um, called the Crusader Corps. And uh, Crusader Corps would be a prequel to uh, Phenomenova that I would love to tell. Uh, I'm going to make a book that's set post World War Four just to one up one. <laughs> uh, you can always top it. But yeah, so it was World War Three with superpowers. And uh, this is just a glimpse of, of some of the destruction that took place. But I, I viewed it as, okay, there's like, yes, superhumans accelerated the conflict and lots of people were wiped out. But a lot of damage was also prevented because of the heroes and so it's almost like powers in this world like with anything can be good or bad depending on how it's used and so i wanted it to be something that's that's uh inspirational and uh i think i'm doing that and if you sign up guys we only have five more days for this um when you sign up you will get this uh training oh, okay i didn't drag this up properly when i was reformatting i gotta fix that you will get this exclusive free trading card unless I did I hold on. I thought I did this right. Messing everything up. My uh, God. You will get this exclusive free trading card uh, by Juju. Uh, Jules. Nice. So make sure you do that. And she also, while I'm here, let's check this out. So we have this variant cover. This is the first one. And then this is the latest one. It's an homage to Final Fantasy VII. By, that uh, was Jules. great. I love the colors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jules did really great on that. Yeah, she came up with a design for the reactor that was way more interesting than what I envisioned. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that was great. And, uh, yeah, it was like, because I had a blonde character standing in front of the reactor, and I was, like, at the gym, and I was like, holy shit, why am I not doing a Final Fantasy VII cover? The new game is coming out. The timing is perfect. I gotta do this. And so I was like, all right, who do I know who can do great art for me and is a Final Fantasy VII fan? And I was like, oh, Jules. She already did the great trading card art. I like the way she draws my character. And what's cool about it, too, is every bit of art she drew is something that, wow, because the interior artist is continuing, and so is the colorist while these uh, cover artists are doing it. And uh, she finished this, like, right before my artist got to the reactor pages. And so uh, because of that, this design is that she came up with my assistant editor helped out like giving feedback is going to be the reactor design in the book and also she was the one originally the costume was going to be more like black or gray and then she uh she came up with this blue and uh, yellow look and i was like holy shit, that's awesome uh so all these things are going to be used in the book it's you know i like the uh, short bus helmet thank you my artist came <laughs> My artist came up with that, and I was like, no, oh. it, it makes sense, but I just have to be an asshole and make fun of it. <laughs> it God. makes sense that you would wear a helmet. <laughs> I'm going to hell. <laughs> no, it does. I mean, it, the thing is, I actually laughed when I first saw that design, but I was like, dude, that's genius. Like, because my artist, uh, it was in an earlier scene, there was going to be the, the first impression of the character was originally going to be a scene, and this is one of those parts where it's like, you got to, I went through so many revisions. It was one of those, uh, like, you have to kill your children kind of things where it was like, my the introduction of my character was originally going to be he's uh, grinding down the rails on his skateboard of his, like, uh, of his school, and then this cute girl goes, hey, Miles, and then he's like, hi, and then he falls down the stairs. Um, that was going to be the introduction of my character. And uh, it was a great thing, but because I changed the intro to feature the World War Three stuff and build into that, it kind mm -hmm. of, uh, instead I reframed it where it was like his dad narrating, instead of it being an omniscient narrator, like in an earlier draft, it was his dad telling the kid the story. And so because of that, I had to start with him being a smaller kid. So because mm -hmm. of that, it was a, one of my favorite scenes, like that, that introduction I love that introduction of the character. I thought it was great. It showed he was clumsy, that he was high energy and all that. But it was one of those things where I had to sacrifice that to uh, do what I think is an overall better intro. But I, I do, you know, <laughs> lament loss of that scene. But it, you have to do it. Every well, yeah. every writer has to do that. You do. You have to do these revisions. It's um, It's hard, but man, I revised my story so many times. Complete overhaul. It's worth it. It's mm -hmm. worth it. 
Where's Jake? Jake is sleeping. He said he wanted to see the fucking books. He's not fucking here. I stream every bitch. Sunday night. What a bitch. Uh, well, I didn't say that. You didn't have to. No, you don't you have said to it in your heart. It. No, you don't have to take it there. Wow, jeez. Oh, my God. I'm so terrible. Why are you so mean to Jake? Absolutely unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, that's literally Jake and I's whole dynamic. <laughs> oh, okay, you can call him whatever you want. Um, Jake was in my chat earlier. He's just, oh, he just. Oh, like, he's what? cheating on us. What? Because <laughs> oh, he was in Bancroft's chat? I bet you he just had like a gout coma again. What That's my excuse whore. every time he's not here. All right. Every time he's not here, he's, a, he's in gout coma. Yeah, so... Uh, it's not Bud Light, it's Anchor Orchard. Is this Bud Light? Whatever. You're drinking Bud Light? It's Angry Orchard, you retard. I was I wasn't looking at it. Jesus. I me. literally just said Angry Orchard. Can't Angry listen. Orchard. Calm down. Don't listen to anybody. Hmm, it was 9 p.m. Yeah, he's probably asleep. Well, anyways, uh, yeah, that new cover looks great. Yeah. Really. Well done, Jules. You're and done. Uh, there is an art <laughs> contest uh going on. So make sure to do that. Ooh, yes. And uh yeah. Um, how long does the art con contest run until? until the end of the uh until I'm like about ready to go to like until I'm getting I I haven't decided officially yet, but probably like before it's probably gonna be one of the last things I like right when we're about ready and I have to just like that's like the last page. Uh huh. I'm, like formatting. That's when I'll end it. Okay. Sounds good. So Yeah, that's interesting. I I wonder how different it would be for you to um, run the archon just before the campaign because I've ran I ran mine during the campaign and I think that's usually what uh what people do but yeah if it works out for you then sure great action to it yeah well I'm no I'm not just running it uh, I'm running it through the campaign too so. oh okay that makes sense that's what I'm saying like all the way until we're basically ready to print and then I. You know, I add because I'm gonna add it. It's gonna be the winner's gonna be printed in the book. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Love this one. Get him out of bed. So fun story. Um. So Jake is in our Pathfinder group, and he has this thing because we're all on like North American or America time. Some of us are in South America. Anyways, um. So the time zones, we're all across different time zones, and Jake is like the latest. So it's always four or five in the morning when we're playing, and um. He regularly falls asleep at the end. And this one time, <laughs> I left the, the game early to go on Flashcast, and I came back, and I like, I see the Discord, and it's just, it's just Jake alone. And I knew he'd fell to fall asleep. Everybody had just left him there. <laughs> so I popped in and I screamed into the headphones, <laughs> and I woke him up <laughs> by screaming through the headphones. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I wanted to wake you up so you can go to bed and not sleep at your desk. And he's like, I was already in bed and you woke me up. Okay. And I feel bad. But I'm loud, guys. I'm very loud. Mm. Did you know that? I can mm. yell a lot. <laughs> um, it was fun. I enjoyed it. <clears throat> Base America time. That's right. Okay. I'm Correct going time. to share... Boop, let's go. I think the perspective is slightly fucked up, but whatever. There's always, you always have, what's wrong with the perspective? I like it. It's dynamic. One thing I notice immediately is it's okay. got, there's like, your stuff always has energy. Like, I really like the energy in this, in this cover. I try. Uh, um, there's going to be a problem with it. There's like, I've. Well, I mean, nothing's perfect. Um. Yeah, I'm trying to add more energy to my work, honestly. Especially with Fiendish. I was just talking about doing the, uh, having a new kind of design sense. Like, oh, I'm so excited to do Chapter 3 because I figured out a, a specific look. Not just like an art style, but a design look. Like, you know, oh, I think this is like, this is the barrier or that is the line between good 
art and good design and great design like so the things that you know if it if you if you can look at a, the design of a series and just tell this belongs to this game or this comic or movie then right. that's good and i want to get to that point because i know fiendish looks good like i can draw but mm. i want to get to the point where like you know how anything mobius draws you know it's him anything Sean Gordon Murphy draws, you know it's him. And especially on Mobius' stuff, for, like his designs for... He doesn't just have like one world, but everything he draws is like this weird psychedelic thing, all these interconnected stuff. But you can... And um, a better example would probably be Ghost in the Shell. You can tell if a design is Ghost in the Shell. It's got this weird, rounded machine look. So I want to get to that point for Fiendish, and um, I think... I think I'll be getting close with chapter three. I honestly do think your art has a very distinct style. I really do. Um, Thank you. I think, like, for example, I can always tell if it's one of your characters' faces by the way they... uh, Something with the nose, especially. The way you draw noses, the way you draw eyes. Oh, I've been told that, yeah. I I do the diamond nose. I don't know where that comes from, but it's just how it, it is how it is. It is what it is. So I like that. It's actually interesting because I'm one. Uh, I was wondering if you because I remember at one point Rini uh, had messaged me. She goes, "Do the opposite of what Vaughn recommends." I mean, I already do. That's not All always true. Generally, it's generally it's not true. true. Generally, don't argue. Keep talking about your book. Um. Uh, so I think that. Let's see. Um. What was I gonna say? Yeah. There's the I we were gonna go with either like I remember you had mentioned you were either gonna have him draw the gun or do a cool pose or have a grenade and I was like well I don't know what you have in mind you said a cool pose and I was like what does a cool pose mean but I knew whatever you were, were gonna have was gonna be good. posturing yeah posturing yeah he, I can cool still pose. have him be holding a gun or something but I actually thought it would be cool if um. He has anything floating, like something floating around like that. Ooh, I didn't even think of that. I don't know, because I... Yeah, so can he... If he can have any floating grenades, let me know. I think that'll make it really mm. much better. I also like to do this thing wh- where you have a little bit... Some elements over the title. So the title text is here. You can have a couple of the grenades floating over it. It, um... You know, it's I like having that kind of design. So yeah, let me know. Yeah, um, I just, I hadn't thought of that. Like little drones, are you talking? I'm working on it. Not just drones, but just like floating grenades. Like even if he just w- leaves them in the air. Like what if it's futuristic? So what if it's right. a grenade that instead of throwing it, you just leave it, press a button, and it floats in place. Ooh. And it, it's like a time set detonation, right? Hold on. It just His floats in is... one location. Ah, uh, dang, that's a really, I hadn't thought of I've had this car- idea for this character. I'm since- full of ideas. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess that because his name is Dark Cloud and they were rain grenades. Like, they're basically like clouds. So if they float like a cloud and then go off. and because the basically Oh, that would look is- super cool. Holy shit. Wait, if, Holy shit. If it was we got this. A cloud of grenades around him. I can even do smoke. Cause, Ooh, or smoke. Um, that works too. Because I like having some kind of element around, like... That'll just push the composition to the next level, and that's what yeah. we want, right? So the you can have that, could work, yeah. or have a smoke just coming out, um, like he's doing a giant black fart. Um, it's up to you. Let me know what you choose: the fart or the floating drones. <laughs> well, when you phrase it like that, it sounds like you're leaning in one direction. I- just i'm just anticipating look you have to anticipate these things i've learned to uh view these from those angles somebody's gonna point it out oh jw thank you that's what i'm aiming for yeah i, no, I, I think it that. i think it comes pretty naturally but i i am um i'm happy that that comes across down goes solo member for 26 months thank you so much uh, Dago Solis is like it better from the left. Kind of, sort of, hate to hijack. But how's that wrecked cover coming along? I have been working on it. But Vaughn is launching this week. So this is the priority now. Your wrecked cover is coming right after this. And then I have another cover. I have so much work. But yeah. 
um, in demand. Your cover, the week after next, I should have your rec cover done. Okay, how's that? I think um, I apologize for taking so long, but that is my next priority after Phenomenova. Um, thank you so much for the super chat. I very much appreciate it. Let's see, did I miss another one? Um, da -da -da. Yes, uh, George Dimitropoulos. I said that. Did I say that right? I did it. For five, thank you. Um, Reading, what is the best way to contact you for a change of address before fulfillment? You can email me. So I just posted some uh, updates on both Indiegogo and Fun My Comic with the email, but I'll type it in chat as well. At Gmail. You can email me at helioncomics at gmail.com. And I'm going to um, post it here too. Uh, here. Da, da, da. There. That's my that's the uh, my company email. So just email me there and I'll be sure to add you to uh, to the notes that RJ gets. And thank you very much. Granda says I see some European and fiendish. Good, good. I'm trying to lean more European indeed. Not completely, but just a little bit. Yeah. Look on me. I'm magnanimously giving away free ideas. Just kidding. I don't care. I love this kind of stuff. It's fun talking about stories and just it, storytelling is it's all problem solving. That's what writing really is, you know. Both art and writing is problem solving. And I think what is entertaining is solving problems in a unexpected but but um, immersive and sensible way in a way that makes sense it does that does that track I think that's what creates entertainment value and not just in like the plot sense but character interactions like when you when a reader doesn't know what's going to happen but when it happens they're like oh of course like, it doesn't break their immersion. That's, like, the sweet spot of storytelling. And that's what I try to aim for as a writer. Oh, Douglas wants me to flip it. No, this is just... This is the actual direction. Don't worry. Because I want... I want um, your main character to be facing this way. to Because the book will flip from this side, right? So, here's another trick. You want to try to have... Just like on your comic pages. Have the movement moving from the top left to bottom right towards the page turn same with the covers try to have oh. movement moving towards the page turn so that's what i always try to do at least i'm just flipping it to like it's not real it's a photoshop thing i can just see the composition better this way so don't worry <clears throat> um grando would love to see fiendish in, in a european album size hardcover oh my gosh <gasps> oh i love that I would love for that to happen. Mm, I don't know how. I mean, I want to do an omnibus eventually. I could do hardcover editions of every book, but I'd rather do maybe. Okay, so here's my thought. I'm thinking of doing trade paper bats. Bats. I hear an echo, by the way, Vaughn. Is it me? Is or there is an echo? You? Yeah, Am I, I hear echo? an echo. All right, let me. A little bit. It might be me, but let's check. Um, so I want to do trade paperbacks, and I'm thinking of just doing compilations of... So I have three books out for Fiendish now, right? And I, Arc 1 was originally going to be Chapter 1 through what is now 4, which is all the way through to Dorvo. That's 1. But I'm starting to think I can break it up into 2, because with the current material, I have like 150 pages of content. Like, that's a trade. So I was thinking I can do a trade, and that's, if I do the Japanese and Chinese and Spanish editions, the trade will be that 150 pages of, like, this is the first chunk. It's kind of the introduction, because then the next trade would be chapter, and 1.5 would be included in that as well now. So it actually would be more than 150 pages. So it would be 1, 1.5, 2, 2, 2, and 2.5. And that's like kind of, this is the intro to the story. And then the next trade will be 3, 4, and I think 4.5 as well. So, um, so I, and I was thinking each edition, so that's the content is the same, but the way I publish it for different markets is different. So for the Asian market, 
they like more manga sized books. So it would be prop. I would do a black and white version, manga size, smaller, and um, formatted for Asia. And then maybe for the European market, I can do the oversized editions in full color and hardcover. Well, I don't know yet, but um, I would love to do that. I hope I can afford it, but I want to expand. I think the more readers, the better. I want to get Fiendish out there. And it's hard, but like this stuff is exciting for me. Um, I I love figuring all this stuff out because like it's hard work because I don't have a publisher, like I am the publisher kind of managing all this. But I think once I do learn all these nuances, I have the creative control that I have over exactly how my book is presented is worth it. Dango Solo says I like manga size books too. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. Probably manga size for the Spanish market or the South American market likes manga size books too. So I think Chinese, Japanese, Spanish, I'll do the uh, black and white manga size and then I'll, I might do a hardcover trade for Europe. I don't know where I'd go. Like, will I have to find the European distributor? Don't know, but we'll figure it out. Dave Brink already is doing a hardcover through Critical Blast. So that's a cool idea. I can always just go through KDP or, or Ingrid and Spark or something. <sighs> He's a monster. Keeps telling me to relax one step at a time. I'm relaxed. I, I'm just an excitable person. <laughs> Grandis is every four books an oversized hardcover edition. I think so. So it's ten books in total. I have like the whole a whole project plan somewhere in my sketchbook. Ten main books, I think, is what the plan is. So the main chapter is nine to ten books, and then a bunch of the 0.5 chapters in between, right? So I think every three to four books will be a collection like a collected edition so every three to four books there'll be a trade or a hardcover edition let me know what you think about that, that yeah i mean fun. yeah it, i mean it's um it's great because it was kind of like all of a sudden i have just a ton of material for fiendish and yes the um i hear people asking about the world building book all the time it'll happen i just haven't done it yet i have a ton of material but I can't spoil things. I had to wait until chapter four. Yeah. So again, a lot of the time, world building wait. is done best done yeah, ever... in the story. Well, that that is how that's how I am approaching my world building, but also with the way I want to tell my story. There's a lot of reveals that I want. I want that experience i want to try to recreate that experience that i really love with mystery storytelling where the the reveal is fresh and if i swear if i do the world building book like there's i mean it's going to be a lot of useless information and then a bunch of spoilers right like or i can do a world building book but you won't have it'll be like nothing like you can i mean i guess i can do one but i think it'll be better with what we know by chapter four. It still won't be all the mysteries because there's a bunch of like, you know, really ancient stuff that'll come up later in the story that I'm not gonna expound upon right now. Yeah. But um, you'll see, you'll know what I mean when chapter four comes out. And after chapter four, I'll do a world building book. It's gonna be awesome, beautiful, huge. You guys are gonna love it. Oh, Granda says, he only backs hardcover oversized books. Cool. Huh. I would love to do that. I just I just feel like, I mean, maybe I should stop being so self-defeating, but I just kind of don't know if there's a market for it. Because, but yeah, maybe I'm just being self-defeating. You know, maybe people really would like that. I mean, it's got an audience. I think that Fiendish, like, certainly... Again, like, I mean, I haven't been reading a ton of stuff, but there's not a lot of books like it that I've seen. Mm. And uh, I, I mean, I think people like I think, like I said, I really think that we're going to. There's an indie comics renaissance. I don't think we're quite 
th- there yet. I think crowdfunding is still catching up. Uh, no, no, but I think that's like crowdfunding is the first. I don't think it should be the first business model. I think you've got the right idea. I think we all have the right idea of expanding after we do that. Like customers first, backers first. And then uh, what you're doing, talking about with collected editions. Like I think accessibility is, is a huge thing that we're missing out on. Well, that's why I've been doing the digital editions of Fiendish and putting yeah. the comic on um, Global Comics. It's um, the wider the readership is, the more the more eyes on the comic in general, the better it is for the crowdfunding backers as well. Because then they're hopefully if someone comes across Fiendish on Global Comics, then they'll check out the uh, the physical books and uh, so I'm, I, I'm sure most people would read the digital edition on global comics but i'm hoping that is successful i only have chapter one up right now but um so it's just like oh that's the introduction chapter but chapter two i already scheduled it to be uh released in a couple of months because oh, cool. i want to kind of take it slowly and hopefully that's a slow buildup of another audience that can discover the comic and hopefully a small portion of them will buy the physical book or look out for the crowdfunding campaigns. And the more the crowdfunding campaigns fund, of course, the better the product is for the backers. And also for the collectors, the more people know about a series, the more their books are worth. So Mm -hmm. I want my comic to get out there. I'm just trying to figure out exactly how to do it. That's why I'm doing the translated editions, all this other crazy stuff. Like I'm spending money on translations and it's no joke. And I'm spending time doing some of the translations myself, but I'm hoping it'll be worth it because we have to try everything. Yeah. That's the thing I think is, um, I mean, I tried a whole bunch of stuff now, like, and if it doesn't work, you got to just move on. Like if something doesn't, if an approach doesn't work, you can't just keep going on it. Like I'll, uh, it's really weird. Like I, YouTube shorts, for example, are such a bizarre thing. Like I had, I did a bunch of shorts back to back kind of talking about a few things. Um, and uh, it, it was really interesting because it was like, I don't know, let me pull it up. Like, for example, with my shorts, I'm looking at it now. I had two shorts that were really similar to each other, released one day apart, right? One got 5K views, and the other got eight views the next day. Like, there's a... Uh, but you got to just keep going. Um, it wasn't like, oh, I give up. You just got to keep going. Um, yeah, shorts are... Bancroft explained it to me once, and I, I'm just like, I still don't really know the magic behind it. I have, like I said, I've been filming some more YouTube videos. I have some shorts too, but I'm focusing more on the videos. But apparently shorts are this weird thing where you just have to keep making them and there's going to be a lot of ups and downs at first because it's something like the algorithm is figuring out who your audience is so it's testing your audiences so is it tests you in the algorithm so you're going to have a lot of ups and downs at first but if you keep posting over a long period of time you'll get a lot of views so mm, sure so yet another thing to- it's so many things like you realize how much of my day uh, is uh hosting shit uh i've also True. been one thing i was hoping to have it out uh before my campaign is probably i'm hoping to have it out uh the week after if possible this final fantasy 7 video essay i am i was like oh it's 49 pages it'll be like i was stupidly going by like the screenwriting rule which is like a page a minute the thing about screenplays is they're deliberately designed to be that way. And there's much less text on a, on a screenplay page. This book, Vaughn is spamming our emails. That's not true at all. Someone, hang on. Someone, hold on a second before I get back to that. Snarky says Vaughn is spamming our emails. How the emails are you? Oh my gosh. The email, oh, this is terrible. false. All the emails I've sent have been good and... One person, I literally announced announced my campaign date, and they were like, "This is." Uh, they and then they unsubscribed and said, "This is spam." I'm like, "What the? F- you don't want to know when it launches? Like, what do you mean?" I guess um, not. I'm like, well, <laughs> "Don't join the mailing list if you don't want to know." Um, you'll get a few emails this week, Snarky. It's launch week. Um, you'll get 
once uh, Rini's cover is, is inked. And then you'll get one later when it's colored. Uh, you'll get a mini print one. You'll get a few this week, and then I'll slow down. Oh, by the way, we are 47 page, well, 46 pages like page technically uh, page. have been inked because, right, um, my, actually, Rini, I think it was your favorite page in the script. You know the part where he's, um, when you were giving feedback, where uh, where he's running around the city? Oh, yeah. Uh, so my artist was like, this is the first time he's done this. He's been going in chronological order. He goes, this is looks like a complicated page. I'm going to probably do this one last. So he skipped to 47. So I have 47, 46 pages penciled and inked, 29 colored fully with more are being flatted, I think. And then I, my colorist does it differently where he, fl he flats and works on a couple at a time. And then he just drops a bunch. That makes sense. Like you want to color. I mean, I, I don't really do interior colors. I just yell at my interior colors. Um, but yeah, you do want to color by scene. Generally, that works better because every scene has its own palette. Uh, that makes sense. That's what he's been doing. Uh, so I got 29 pages colored. And then um, I got 10 pages lettered today. So I'm kind of, we're pretty far along and uh, things are going to keep going. And uh, it's been really good. But anyway, back to what I was saying. So 49-page video essay, right? I'm like, oh, this <laughs> this won't be that long. Um, I am at page 30. Where am I at? Seven, I think. Uh, the book is, the video is uh, an hour and 37 minutes long so far. So. Barb Rogers, thank you for another membership. Thank you very much. Thank you, Barb Rogers. I keep forgetting to get those. We'll stop forgetting. My God. JW says he's like how dynamic the page looks. Thanks. Yeah, I tried. It really good. I thought of a. You guys want to see the other compositions? I went yeah, I'd love to. Versions. Uh, let's see. What well, I had this one. Yeah. Uh, ooh. But I thought. I don't know. I thought. I wanted to strike this balance where your villain looked intimidating, but your main character was also fairly large on the screen, which yeah. is why I went with this. Like, I think this one is good as well, but I think for issue one, your main character is too small. So in the future, I could use a similar composition as this or like something else. But yeah, like this is this is book one. So you want your main character to be front and center. Here's another one. It's like a oh, that here. one's cool too. Yeah, which is again, it's cool, but issue one, you want to see the main character. So. That makes sense. Yeah, I like the way you think. Yeah, I mean the villain guys, the hero needs to be losing on the cover usually. Uh, I find you want generally. them to feel uh, nice and under pressure. Oh yeah, I mean I when I think of most of my favorites, it's like the hero. The hero in some way is fighting back. Um, your hero is <laughs> winning all the time. He. He is. He's he's a fifteen year old kid, and your uh, your villain yeah, is a big that's guy. The, so you, dude, he is smart. actually that much smaller if they were standing side by side. Which I do think this would be cool. So I don't. I still want to do this cover, oh, but eh. yeah, I'm he's already. He's like he's like, like pay he's like pay me to do two covers. Hey, listen. If you want to, I want to. Be... No, don't. No worry about it. No, this don't one. Don't worry. Is fine. Don't worry about um, it. But uh, just saying. No, <laughs> I mean I'm it's not. It's up you to know, you. Yeah, yeah. No, if you do want to switch, I mean we don't. We have no, like no, no. Both a week. Gorgeous. But if you like this one, I can switch over and finish this and try to um bang it out in time. But yeah, I chose this one because no, I chose your choice. The main one character, is cool, you know, should be big. Don't forget a fart class. I will not. I will not. I'd love this to will do a be... making book though at some point. Yeah, that's a good idea. Jake's I'd love doing to that. Get those thumbnails for that uh, making up. This would look uh, really good with the grenades floating. So let me know if I can add that. I, I could. Yeah, right. we could figure something. Honestly, that might be really cool. I'm down. If you prefer that, especially you prefer that over the the um the smoke, right? Or do you want to do both? Yeah, yeah. I think the grenades will be better, especially I think it fits your villain better as well. 
Okay, cool. Yeah, and then we'll set them off or like because the way the grenade, the rain grenades work is it's imagine it's like because the way it was actually that's such a natural fit. I can't believe I didn't think of that. The way the grenades worked was you chuck them in the air, right? And it's supposed to like be like almost like a shower faucet with like rain shaped bullets, like and then it falls mm -hmm. down. But if it's floating around him and it gets triggered by something, that's such a good fit because it's like a cloud that rains bullets. Holy shit. Mm. There you go. Not to stroke your ego, of course. You know, I never want to do that. Oh, no, no. Um, I My ego is already maxed out. Thank you. I know I have great ideas. <sighs> I made a mistake. It's okay. Is that you? <laughs> <laughs> mm. You? Uh, thank you for the membership, Barb Rogers. Uh, I think I caught that one. Um, oh, Bancroft, I want to highlight this. He said, you have to do about two months worth of shorts for YouTube to find a right audience, right? Yeah, that's, um, that makes sense. I was, that's why I, I just, I didn't do shorts, but I just recorded the audio for a bunch of videos. So I'll slowly be editing those and putting those up, but I should do some shorts too. And down goes Solo says, do shorts of character profiles. Um, already on it. I have short videos, but they're not shorts because shorts have to be under a minute. So I have character profiles for the main characters that are like four or five minutes. I thought they would be longer, but they're really not. Like maybe I can get into more detail. I might redo them to get into more detail, but I'll do like one minute versions of them too. So that's what I realized. Yeah. I'm like, Oh my god, why don't I do that? I have so much I have so much material. I have so much world building shit. I can talk endlessly about like, well, this country, that this magic system, this character, blah blah blah. What and like I'm just gonna do that. Videos, duh. Like when I, if I'm streaming, like this stuff is buried in streams. Like you guys probably know all that information, but you know, what what about a new audience? Like, why would a new audience hop in a stream and you know listen for three hours before yeah, I exactly. start? <laughs> like duh. Yeah. Yeah, no, you that's need to figure things out. Hank, yeah, I wanna that did that overhead is I think that's the one you pitched to me if I remember correctly, right? It wasn't because either way, look this one looks awesome, but I do remember because I was curious. But uh that Where'd one looks so cool. What are you talking about? You're talking about the cover or shorts? Yeah. Or what? No, the, the oh, overhead. The I'm sorry, because someone else mentioned it in the chat. Oh. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, that, that looks cool too. But it, uh, but yeah, we're gonna stick with this one, I think. But even still, that that's such a cool. Sorry, I just want to look at it again. Do you want to ask chat? If chat likes this more, I'll finish this one instead. I also don't want to make more work for you though. You've already put so much. It's work fine. There. It doesn't matter. Like the cover has to be good. Well, the cover is going to be good either way. No, uh, you know what I mean. It's fine. I'm fast. I can do it. Chat, which one do you guys like? Hmm. I like both. I really like both. I'm going to do another poll. Okay, this one. <clears throat> um, will be B. And... If this follow one. your heart, Reenie says Squibs. I'm in agreement with that. Okay. I did hire it follow for you. Heart. I trust your decision. Like, I genuinely <laughs> trust your decision. That was your first mistake. <laughs> it was. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Why would you do that? Okay. Start a poll. Most streams have horrible time. That was a thing I used to be really bad. I was trying to find, like, streams... Because the thing is, I didn't know what I'd do, so I'd call my streams like, oh, fun time, uh, hanging out. And then whenever I'd be like, oh, I want to find a clip for this bit, I wouldn't have no idea what stream it was on. Because the titles of my streams were so ambiguous. Um, what I do is I, I kind of take notes if there's like a really good bit. I'll just like jot it down in a memo. But it's a pain. Like, I would rather do what Bancroft does, where I... um. It's just like record something real quick. It's really not that much work. It's just, it's weird because it's not that much work physically, but I have to like get in the headspace for recording. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, 
it's probably just because I haven't been doing it for a long time. I remember when I first started streaming, I had to like get in the headspace for streaming and get in the headspace for like talking to people and almost doing a presentation. Like, no, I'm much more relaxed about it. But I think you just have to be relaxed about it, get used to getting into that mindset. And when you're recording, like I, I also script everything out because I'm like, if I don't script everything out, I don't think I talk very concisely. I think I, I want to make sure this is the right length. I get all the, I, I like everything written out. So it takes a little bit of prep work. But yeah, should, um, I think, uh, I hope that'll pay off. Va, 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 va. Yeah, the poll is up. Everybody let me know. I don't know what one... to vote. I like hmm. Pick. Choose. Right. Make up your mind. All right, I think I, I I've made my choice, but I did want to see what chat was thinking, and it looks like they're okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with either one. Don't worry, I can finish it. I might zoom in on this just a little bit. Actually, no. There's always so much trimming in the print, so I'll zoom. In. I'll keep it like this. Yeah, man, the printer trimming is no joke. That shit trims everything. I'm scared yeah, of this it. One... I'm terrified of the printer. Add more bleed. You need to add a whole... Okay, hold on. Look, I'm 47 look at... pages in. <laughs> so... I can show you how. All right. Um, hold on. Like, <laughs> this time, the... um, And it's not, it's not the printer's fault. It just dis sometimes happens. Because I went with the same printer with uh for the last print one for Fiendish 2 and this one. This time, the... It's just the machines sometimes trim closer. Look how close some panels are to the edge. And I left tons of bleed. I have a whole half inch past this on every oh, page. I'm scared. Fucking build in your bleeds, dude. All right. Um, yeah, yeah, nothing I'll but trim off, so help. we're good, because I'm really careful about that stuff. But I yeah. might need help with that. I'm scared. But, uh, I yeah, I I'm using... I may or may not be using your printer. I'm not sure if I'm one of the. Well, make up your damn mind. No, I am. I all right. I am. I just wasn't sure if I'm allowed to say that. Okay. But yeah, I guess I am allowed to say that. Uh, let's do. I'm gonna do A. By the way, I forgot to say it. Okay. Let's, let's stick all with right. A. Well, that's all right. Cool. Well, that's Vaughn, cool. if your book has chalked off pages, sort of, dude. I no one be more pissed about that than me. Because you guys wouldn't know if I if they were chopped off. I'd gaslight you and be like, no, that was my artistic intent. Um, no, no. Huh. Please except don't if, do they're, that. if they're from the campaign. No, that was one thing I learned in film school, actually. Was they would teach me, like, if you make a mistake in your film or do something stupid, always, always claim artistic intent. Yeah, there's artis artistic intent. That... <laughs> <laughs> there's that but then there's also like we there's a that. giant typo and half of your characters like a like a speech bubble is trimmed off the book like that's not artistic intent <laughs> but I, i'm sure you won't have that happening nobody will say something deep about society cutting people off or uh, sure <laughs> yeah look this shit is close to the edge dude i'm living on the edge guys Oh. <laughs> but yeah, it I, turned out fine. It's nuts. I'm you think I'm like I'm just surprised that they've never like in all these years of comic history they haven't figured out how to get around that. What do you mean? Like to, it's I not a know. comics thing. It's just a printing. No, the machine itself. Uh, have you been to a printing press? Uh. No. Okay, so what they do is imagine this is a stack of books that are all the same book, right? Right. So they print the books, they bind them. There's a bunch of different ways of binding, but for my print, it actually um, was is like a wild process where they print on a huge sheet of paper that's like 16 pages all at once, front and back, and they fold it in a certain way and then bind it so before it goes into the trimming machine it probably looks like some crazy thing with a bunch of like extra paper sticking out the side and then this giant you put in a my books almost fell <laughs> sorry about the weird noise then you put in a huge stack that's even more than this and it's a big industrial blade that just goes 
So it's a huge giant blade trimming your books. And there is a laser guide, but there's going to be like a quarter inch to half inch variation. That's why you build in a blade. Because imagine a huge stack of books with a huge industrial blade. That's the only way you get mass printing done. So mm -hmm. it's um it's a machining problem. It's not a digital file problem. It's a, yeah. I mean, I'm sure in the future it'll be as printing gets more and more exact as time goes on. But right now it's just, you know, standard to build in bleed for any print product, anything. Gotcha. And I'm used to opera one of those giant blades. I love being in print shops, man. Like it's just, I've been printing stuff since I was like a teenager. No, I'm not working at a print shop, but you know, I've been making comp my own comics and art books for so long. Like, oh, I just love being at a print shop. It feels like home. It's nice. And like new book smell is so nice. It's just part of making comics. I love it. It's such a good feeling. In uh in Taiwan, I'm gonna start drawing while I'm talking. Um so we're going with A? Yeah. I guess we're going with A. All right, I'm gonna continue. Um yeah, in, in Taiwan, I remember there was like this family, everything is family owned there, but there's this family owned print shop down the road. There were a couple and, uh, well, as in there, there were two or three family owned print shops and they were both all run by couples, but as in there were also a couple oh, of also couple a few print shops. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. I just realized it was like, yeah, but, um, English, but they, um, they were, uh, I lived in this university town, so they usually were used to printing, like, oh, flyers and, like, papers for students and stuff. And I was, like, this one weird high school kid going in, like, can you print my art book? Can you make prints for me? And, like, all this stuff. And, like, that was me figuring out how to print and bind stuff. Like, I was, like, 15 and, like, you know, they were, like, trying to figure it out at the same time as me. And I was, like, I want to do, like, these cool art books that I see people doing on DeviantArt. Yeah. Oh, but it was so much fun. And I learned so much. It was great. I would just sit there. This is your shop, Angel going Rebellion over files days? With them. Yes, it was. Classic. Yes, my, uh, I'm proud of my old handle. It's my, my rebellious days. Because you those gotta are do a over. Book. I totally don't have problems with following authority, guys. <laughs> well, because you're not a commie, you know. That's why. I mean, I, I try. You I try, try not to be a commie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not. You no, know, really, I'll be honest. So I've been posting on multiple platforms, and uh, and I remember posting about because I was like, oh, I'll do a short about that. I'm doing a stream with my cover tonight. And I was, I posted I as soon as I uploaded uh because I upload on Facebook, which Facebook, by the way, has been fucking me over. Same with Instagram, but that's its own thing. Um, um Facebook has majorly throttled me as well. I used to get like a hundred likes on shit. I'm like now I get what 30? You I'm know like, why, right? Because they want you to pay for it. I had a friend, really? my friend, uh, my friend Sukasha. So she's she's the one that did the first cover for me. She was giving me all these uh, tips and stuff and about what to do with the algorithm. She's like the biggest thing, Vaughn. I have to be honest. Like, I'll apply everything for you. If you really want to blow up, you have to pay for it. She's like, I. Uh, she has. Hold on, let me see. How many followers? Oh, like 106k on her main, uh, 35k on her art account, right? And she's like, yeah, I have to pay for. You have to pay for ads because because that's what how Zuck makes his his uh, money is they Stupid. they intentionally suppress Stupid. you, especially have, when you feel noticed. Like if I take a picture, that's just me and my friends hanging. Hey, fuck out, you, right? Zuck. Hey, Zuck, go fuck yourself. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, if I do a random picture of my friends and I hanging out, that'll get more traction than if it's ever something I'm right. promoting and I'm right, starting to think that that's intentional. Something. That makes sense. Because I'll, I'll post, like, a dumbass selfie, which I don't really do, but then that will get more attention. I'm just like, I don't know. But it didn't used to be that way, right? I would get the same amount of attention on my art and, like, well, my stupid, like, food photos. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, it's annoying. I don't yeah. know. If it helps, I, I wouldn't spend a lot of money, but I'll throw ten bucks at Zuck's greedy fucking ass, maybe. Yeah, I have because I have my Instagram has like what forty thousand followers, and I get 
200 likes and i'm like yeah, i used to get more sense. It's I should be getting more likes. I know it's because people aren't seeing my stuff, and it's not because my stuff sucks. So yeah, it's forty one k. Yeah, what? you should absolutely you, be getting more. Meta. No, you know why? No, they literally, and I'm not joking. They literally uh, consider my. They labeled. I can't even even in a private message. Like I was trying to give Jules my new uh, email address for my comic book, or it was Jules or someone else. I typed in rebeloasisstudios.com, wouldn't let me send the message. Like, at Rebel, like they don't let me. I have to put, that's why if you notice on Instagram and Facebook, I just have the MailChimp link. They literally will not let me use my own address because they labeled it because it has a cartoon gun and the word rebel. Uh, they branded my comic book website, my all ages comic book website, a terrorist group. That is I have screenshots ridiculous. that prove it. Like that's, I have that's screenshots. That's actually of... really, really dumb. And that silly. was day one. I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> I made all these new socials account. I got the new thing." And then they go, uh, "I posted on my story. I'm like, what's happening? What's happening? I have the screenshots. Hang on, crazy. I'm trying to find it. It's in. I remember you tweeted. By the way, thank you for that. It unfortunately fell on deaf ears, but uh, they're really saving the world by stopping a, a, ch a like a, a you know an upcoming creator without a book yet really really stopping uh, uh, that rebellion like i'm gonna yeah. lead a rebellion against the government like me? it's probably it's just algorithmic i think but it they really should be more nuanced about this bankrupt says i like, get good interaction on twitter now yeah twitter has well, been twitter has been great totally i get good bot. interaction on twitter honestly and um but it's just facebook and instagram though. i noticed there's a noticeable drop and i i hadn't really been figuring out why if that makes sense they want you to pay Although uh, Twitter flagged me uh, for promoting during the, and they're like, oh, you'll, you'll be suppressed for this week because we consider it spam and it's the week I'm launching. I'm like, this is the worst time. Come on. But meanwhile, I still get <laughs> Lincoln bio at the bottom of every post. So those guys are fine. Or do you guys oh, ever, yeah. get, you ever so, get the ones that's, hey, bro, check this out? Well, I, yeah, even I get that. I'm like, no. <laughs> 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 no, I don't know why here. <laughs> I should do that. Uh, to pr instead of promoting my comic, I should just do the the link in bio thing. There's and try that so out. many fucking like thought accounts. It's not even real thoughts. It's like AI thoughts. Like this is the future world, guys. I remember not even just thoughtery. You not even AI, but AI thoughtery. Welcome to the dystopian future. We're already here. I remember like you what? posted something and it was like within a minute or so. I'm like, holy shit, Rini already got eight replies and they're all like pussies in bio. In bio. No. I'm like, what? Yeah, the those are the only lists. I'm like, block, 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 block. Those are only oh, ones I'm that I block. Reporting. Ridiculous, man. So, I mean, but I Twitter has still been good engagement for me. I guess the trade off is just suddenly there's a lot of pussy in bio accounts. Streaming okay. on Twitter has been huge. Like, holy, that doubled my audience. Oh, yeah. I should do that. Double. You know, you don't you know do that. Oh, it's so good. You know the views rack up though, so the views on Twitter aren't real. Anybody, mm -hmm. anytime somebody stops by a view and that stays there, even if they leave the page, so it looks like your views are really high. No. <laughs> yeah, because when we were streaming Creative Block and Phil was streaming on Twitter, and uh. It, lo it looked like we have 300 people watching. It actually wasn't. You didn't. Epic. You had like three people, <laughs> people like clicked on it. Oh, it just, man. The view stays there and doesn't leave. I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but yeah, I'm all about honesty. By the way, <laughs> uh, Rini, Kelsey is on his way to. So if, if you look, my because if I search my Voncom presents and I do the, the most viewed ones, the top seven most viewed, the top six most viewed are all girls right yeah kelsey is slowly about to surpass my first interview with you it looks like he's breaking he might be breaking his way up there kelsey okay I'm, I'm just surprised that kelsey interview was no i'm just surprised i didn't think why anyone are you surprised doing. kelsey's awesome like no, yeah, kelsey is I, awesome he's an, he's an Dude, old that was super too. fun he has, mm -hmm. he that has was um such a fun interview yeah he has so much wisdom with comics honestly because he's been doing it for so film long too i didn't know he was such a film nerd but he yeah yeah he's i don't he's talk 30. i realize as much as i, and I love i can obviously talk about comics forever i don't talk about 
others like i don't talk film enough with narwhal i don't talk i don't talk video games enough with jake like jake's a hashtag gamer he is jake yeah he's he a is. gamer boy it, yeah you like yeah, video oh, games. oh he is complete with pewdiepie and belle delphine merch that's jake belle delphine well belle delphine i don't even think she's a real gamer is she is there any evidence she actually no! likes video games like, that's what I mean. Fake gamer girls. Is Belle Delphine a real gamer? It's kind of like, is oh my Amaranth god. Is Amaranth a real gamer? Or like those cosplay <laughs> girls? Um, <laughs> those cosplay girls that like will, um, they're, they'll like cosplay a character and then I'm like, oh, the guy who created that character is right over there. They're like, okay. And I'm like, alright. She isn't. They don't care. I mean, I, I get okay. If I didn't have comics that I couldn't draw, I would understand that allure because everybody likes attention, right? Um, so yeah, I guess <laughs> like I don't mind cosplay, I do mind thoughtery, but cosplay is fine, like well, just put some skill into it because it could be an art. You depends. do get attention, and it, it is about putting attention on yourself, but some really skillful cosplayers are impressive, and they straight up are amazing craftspeople. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't have a problem. Yeah, or some of them just look impressive. You know, yeah. Yeah, there's uh, some really impressive cosplays out there. Yeah, yeah, great. costumes. Yeah. Um, when do we get the fiendish cosplayers? Oh, well, hey, I'm waiting. Happen any time. All right, you're watching in chat. Will you be the first? I don't think I'll, any. Who the fuck would cosplay Casimir? I probably someone with blonde hair. You know. Don't do it. Why not? I'll be the first one. Oh my god! I'll make history. Because you don't look like him. What are you talking about? I was about? uh, I was expecting. I mean, I you have blonde hair. That's girls. the only. You don't look. All he's blonde like, people look the same. He's like a foot taller than you, and his hair is straight, and he doesn't look like you. Just because you're blonde doesn't mean you look like you. I, hang on. How tall do you <laughs> think I am? I know how tall you are. You're like, what, 5'9"? Yeah. Yeah. 5'9", five, 5'8". Five, five, hey, five. sorry for being judgmental, okay? It's, I'm just you know pointing out. My character looks I, different. I'm heightist. Um, <laughs> I'm a heightist. There you go, everybody. I'll wear, I'll wear big... <laughs> Or big boots. You won't even. You'll wear big know. boots. <laughs> yeah, wear big boots. Or Rainy stilts, Ragna stilts. cosplay. Nah, I don't think I'll costume my own characters. Ragna. So Ragna is very cosplayable. I mean, I kind of. Yeah, it wasn't intentional tits. with the design, <laughs> but it was. Um, it was also kind of a thing where I realized with her design. Oh, I'm sure she's fun to cosplay. And honestly, anybody can cosplay her because she's just like this weird human race I made up. Like fucking anybody can wear a green wig and um, I don't know, uh, push up their boobs and look like her. So mm. Red Valkyrie, Shay did a cosplay of her, by the way. Ra How so tall is Ragnar supposed a... to be, by the way? She's tall, like right? five. No, she's tall. She's like 5'10 or 5'11. Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. It's fully at her tall. But not that Jonathan tall. Justice said I could cosplay. Well, you know, I won't stop you from cosplaying Ragna if you really want to. You can go right ahead. <laughs> you can go right ahead. Well, I could cosplay young cosplay. <laughs> <laughs> you you cut yeah, that would work much better. I'm I have no problem with that. It's my God damn genetics, man. It's my you know mom's what? fault. <laughs> They Blame split the mom. difference. No, because they split oh. the difference. I could have been my dad's Chad height, but my mom had to be short. Yeah, blame your mom. Well, That's the way genetically, to go. it would have to be my mom's fault. You know, um, I ended up just being the height of all the women on my dad's side. My mom's mm. tiny, and I got none of those genes. Thank God. I mean, she's very adorable, but I also like being tall. So there you go. It doesn't matter as much for girls. Yeah, Jonathan dude. Justice says he can cosplay her. You know what? I am not a cosplay elitist. I will not tell you what you can or can't cosplay. You should cosplay Ragna. Yeah, you I should. Endorse it. Please come to Heroes Con. If anyone cosplays my characters that comes to Heroes, I'll give you free shit. All right, cool. That? All right, I'll do that then. Not you. Anybody in chat? <laughs> 
drive people away from your booth. <laughs> what? I said I'll cosplay Cosmere and people will walk the other way. <laughs> yeah, they'll they'll just backfire completely. <laughs> right mm. on. Ragnar wouldn't date most people. I'm shocked she's even interested in Casimir. What do you mean? You're sh you created them. Yeah. It's like she... Have you noticed her? She's a little condescending. She doesn't like most people. Um, yeah. Heroes Con is in Charlotte, North Carolina. In like, in June. Mid-June. It's a good show. It's a very comic-focused show. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, going. We're going. Excited. Yeah, I'm excited. Um... Down goes solo. Free shit. Yeah. I don't know. I'll give you something for free. Like uh, maybe a free bedeviled book or something. But it'll be good. It'll be good. Yeah. Cost my characters. What are you That'll doing awesome. with, uh, like, with the table? Because I know Jake's bringing a preview book. Is he getting a table? Like, what's going on with that? He's bumming off of my table. Okay. Oh, shit. That was my plan. I did it. Well, I called it first. Did I volunteer that? Yes. Did you just actually you were did. Oh, okay, you really well, I guess you did. Can, then. <laughs> you fucking God! I gotta get. I, I gotta record our conversation. Yeah, yeah. I guess you do. Well, I guess I'll just have a little corner at the edge that's both you and Jake. Why is everyone bumming off? Get your own fucking table. <laughs> well, I didn't think Jake. I called. Hang on, this is ridiculous. This is what. I know because I was like I was that's why I got it first. Well, actually, that's not the only reason. I just actually first because I'm smart. I need to Jake. talk to. Mm, I am my smarter guy. than Jake. Did, did are you? Did you just tell yourself, <laughs> comforting yourself? I'm smarter than Jake. I'm smarter than Jake. I... Is that really what just happened? Yeah. Okay. Oh, right. I could Nancy probably Gore sell a print of this. Out. Thank you. I probably sell, share a print of this at a Heroes Con. Uh, cause cause is six two. He's tall. I mean, everybody from at Valden really and Peroskan people, which is the ethnicities, you know, in that area, are kind of tall. So he's not exceptional, but yeah, he's tall. Yeah, I could I could fake five inches to my height. I can do it. Might take a little. Can you? Oh, no. This is Gattaca. Like, what the fuck is happening? Well, yeah, I'll put uh, I'll put like. Uh, I'll do it yeah, one day. whatever they did with Lord of the Rings with like the trick uh, angles. Uh, I just think they got short people and children oh, shit. to stand next to the other actors. All right, well, um, I'm about to have the question. Down goes solo for 10. Thank you so much for the super chat. Can I buy a tiny corner of your table? I don't think I'm going to have space after all yeah. these people try to put their merch on my table. I asked you first. I was very Why? nice about it. I, I, I am recognizing that. I will believe you. I can I can believe you. And I don't have a problem with you having your book at my table. That's totally fine. But uh, I can't have three people's stuff all at my table. You guys can also pull together and get a table. Go to Billy's table. Unannounced. Tell him I... It's not that expensive. It's not that expensive. I, here's yeah, what I want I you to do. I want you to go to actually Andy's table and be like, yeah, Vaughn said I could set up here. And I'm like... And That'll really, really go over well. <laughs> you should definitely do that. Well, no, because Andy, Andy and I were talking. I because I, I was like uh fucking with him. He goes, All right, I'm gonna flip your table over. Uh, and I'm like, jokes on you, I don't have a table. He's like, Oh, I should tell him on your table. That'll work. Yeah. Oh, down goes solo just so yeah, sure. Yeah, I was kidding. I was kidding. A flyer or just one book is totally fine. You guys are my friends. Fly is no it way. is it flyer f l i e r uh, I did that at by the way I'm a moron dude at Tampa so I uh I didn't realize that like you could just get a free QR code so like a complete idiot I went to one of those um custom QR code websites and I printed out like 250 of those things I still have them um you pay for a QR code hold on no I didn't pay for it no that was the problem I didn't pay for it because I used the free site. And then what happened was Patrick had them and he would mail them out with like every Johnny Phantasm for months. For those oh. months, uh, the QR code was completely obsolete. <laughs> so, oh, because you changed the, the website. And not only that, but now they can't look it up because the name of the comic is different. You can't just do a redirect, do a domain redirect. Uh, what? No, no, no. I'm saying, I, but no, the QR code. 
was to the MailChimp one. Yeah, you. But the UR code doesn't work anymore. Okay, you can't. So, this is why you buy a domain. No, I do. I have that now. The... You didn't have it at. Okay. Hey, we live and learn. Yeah. We live and learn. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The player is totally fine, Dago. So it's not a problem at all. Yeah. I'm. I'm launching your book too, right? So. Um. That makes complete sense. Uh, where's Heroes Con? Yes, that is. Uh, that is in Charlotte. Called them both my parents. Oh, huh. It could be a nutrition thing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm the exact same height as all the women on my dad's side. Um. Uh. So like, I tower over everybody in Taiwan. Like, I'm taller than the men in my family in Taiwan. Really? I'm just a fucking. I'm a giant. Wow. <laughs> it's hilarious. That's I'm nice. so tall when I go back there. Uh, I should start. Yeah, I wonder how where I rank in the height mm -hmm. scale, my family, because it's. I think I'm about like the average height with my family. At least my mom's side, I'm about average height. So you got um, it right. Yeah, I'm a giant girl. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'd be love. To I'd love to. I meant to reply to your DM too, by the way, Travis. Um, about the business stuff, I am considering it. Just so you know, I've just been busy. Like, clearly, I have to finish this cover. Um, but yeah. Um, now, reading is one of the hardest. I'll talk to you about it. People. You guys don't even understand. I have so much shit to do. It's ridiculous. No, uh, I do. Here's a phenomenova. Let me pin that. Let me pin that comment so you guys can <laughs> sign up for phenomenova. Uh, this is what I'm. Supposed to be drawing right now, but I'm not. So, um, it looks great. Right. Oh, the polls is cover A. Okay, perfect. All right, there you go. Yeah, let me pin the this comment and everyone go sign up for Phenomenova and I'll actually get back to work now. All right, continue. American average height is 5'9. That's true. I thought Victor, it would be taller. But know, Victor is spreading some uh, propaganda. Rini, I'm taller than Rini. All right, this is ridiculous. Slightly, yeah. but uh, no, you are a little bit. Yeah, there are pictures. Th I'm five seven, but I don't really wear heels so much as I wear. Oh, I have these. Boots. Then I'd be fucked. I, no, I wear boots that are. I like wearing combat boots a lot, so it makes me look taller. But I'm five seven. Since apparently this matters. I don't know. Um, it's a good height. It's a good height. Like, everybody's surprised because, you know, if you look Asian, people expect you to be like five feet tall. No. Well, statistically, that would be, you know. Accurate. Me giant. Me big. Girl. <laughs> Me Shrek. So still. I'm really. Or is there going to be like crackles of lightning there too, or we're? I'll add lightning. I'll do it in colors. That's what I was thinking. That looks really cool so far, though. I like the. Uh, it was one of those things where it was. It was like a bunch of uh, people adding ideas. Like I just throw things around. Like even down to my character. I think he has knee pads or something. Right? Let me double check. They do. Yeah, uh, because that was again skateboarding was in an earlier draft. And even though that got taken out, that idea stayed. So he is canonically a skater boy, but you just don't see it in issue one. I don't know when you'd see it. Now that he can run fast, you might it might just be like, hey, back in the day, he used to be a skater. Um, I do wonder, that could be, would that be in any way useful if you have super speed skater boys? I guess, super skater. Oh, you break the skateboard. No, but if you had like a like a special one, have him make a skateboard out of lightning and ride on the lightning. Ride the lightning. Mm. It doesn't oh. make physical sense, but just do it because it looks yeah. cool. Who cares? Yeah. The rule of cool. Yeah. Well, um, I also, oh, cockfight queen. How does it feel being a, the first cockfight queen? The only cockfight queen. It feels great. That was a really and when fun all my cockfights. It was fun. It was a, okay. To be clear, and I said it on stream as well, um, Dark Gift said I won. I still feel like it's a tie. Um, fucking I mean, Dark take, Gift. Like it was... take, I, I, Honestly, I will criticize Anthony for this. He should have set a clear cutoff time and stuck with it instead of dragging the voting on and on. So, But anyways, he it was a great. Um, it was a fun stream, 
And I appreciate everybody for tuning in and voting. It was hella fun. It was so great. Honestly, I was nervous because I hadn't done so I hadn't done any drawing streams in so long, but I still had a lot of fun. Well, we know when you're uh, like you're I mean, it's not like your your drawing skills are gonna just disappear. I actually didn't really know who Dillard was. Dillard is fun. Uh did Narwhal win his? Yes, Narwhal won his. Yeah, Creator Narwhal won his. Sweet. Dillard is Flash's artist, by the way, so he's really good. Mm, yeah, I no, was I'm... nervous because Dillard is fast because, like, I know I can draw, but I'm not that fast, right? I'm like fast ish. Dillard is super fast, but uh, but yeah, um, he's doing Flash's book, so everyone, yeah, I'm sure everybody here knows him. Marwell did win his, yes. When is the next one? Anthony's doing them bi weekly, right? Yeah, he's, I think he, the first two were like back to back and then afterwards weekly. So creative yeah. block has a winning streak. Uh, well, Phil Phil can draw. I mean, kind of, but not like he's not like an artist. You know. <laughs> wait, wait, right. no, no, no. We need to have two non-artists like Phil against another writer. That I'm would be so much fun. Wait. Oh, I gotta <laughs> learn. I gotta get like a Rocky training montage and learn to draw. Phil and Jake have to set up. Step, a step up, right? I thought you said Dude, have the. I gotta beat Phil, it. but Jake that actually draw, Phil would win though because he has some fundamental drawing skills. I literally don't have any. I need to. I need to train. I have no he, drawing talent. Phil and Vaughn. I think Phil would just have an aneurysm. Yeah, I don't. Maybe, <laughs> why would Phil have an aneurysm? <laughs> I don't know. I wonder why. Down goes nice. solo said he. Why? Why would he have an aneurysm? Because he'd be scared. Down goes solo. Are you challenging Vaughn? I'll bring it on, dude. Let's go. Is this train. happening? Who are you challenging? Is it Phil or Vaughn? Rini, can you be my my Asian mentor, please? And like give me no. a martial arts montage, but for no, no, I can't. Why I'm too not? Busy drawing your cover. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right shit who's my uh i need a different all right to make a power uh, all right billy tucci i i just gonna have to be my mentor i'm gonna be like billy i know and he'll be like yeah, dude, go, go have, he'll tucci. be like dude i'm literally like i have a job like i i like i'm i'm doing this full time i'll be like billy you got to stop everything you're doing um this is important. to pay attention to me <laughs> yeah, you, me should, you should say it that way <laughs> pay attention, pay attention. Me. i'm no seeing him uh next Sunday. Hi, Hazu. So, What's up? Oh, awesome. When, I, when I'm hanging with him next Sunday, I'll be like, all right, Billy, I know you're having fun at this this like little con. Stop everything you're doing. Stop your business. Uh, help, <laughs> help me right now. Yeah, yeah. Just demand a, his paid, attention. I paid to get into the... I think Steranko's going to be there, too. Hang on. Oh, cool. Steranko's usually at, is at Heroes as well. Dude, Steranko's yeah, Heroes has a there. great guest list. Frego's going to be there. Andy Smith is confirmed bunch of other people um i know kennedy's gonna be there and it's a very artist focused show so i can't wait to be back um yeah that's yeah nice. that's gonna be i was uh tabling with michael golden last year i was working with him and it was between him frega and jim steranko it was great mm. it was really fun uh and then fucking matt yaki uh the whole time was just messing with me the whole show because I had to keep like, hey, come to the table. Here's this. And then Matt Yak, you'd be like, you're not doing it enough. And like, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't. <laughs> so fucking love Matt Yak, he was supposed to do a print for me, but he wasn't able to meet the deadline because uh, of some like some stuff. But uh, he's that Yak, he's the man. All right. Who's going to be yeah, at yeah. this? Cool. Wait, be... down goes solo is challenging both Vaughn and Phil. Are we going to have a three way cockfight, everybody? Is oh. this happening? Let's do it with me. <laughs> a three-way cockfight right. between non-artists. Anthony, somebody send this clip to, to Anthony. Down goes right. solo has challenged Vaughn and Phil to a three-way cockfight. Let's I, go. No, I want to see this. It's going to be a disaster. Mentor. Please. <laughs> All right. I got to actually use my how to draw Marvel books. Um... <laughs> You don't need a mentorship. The whole point is none of you can draw. No, Phil can like I like Phil can draw like not... No. Yes, he can. He draws. It's that's like me drawing with my non-drawing hand. Then it's still better than my 
my bet <laughs> if I took oh I he could this is better than literally anything I can draw. What hold on, let me actually full screen you. Let's look at Phil's masterpiece. It's better than anything I could draw. Yeah, I guess I am. I, I guess he keeps well for now. It. For now. <laughs> for now. I'm gonna beat okay. you, bitch. All right. Yeah. Oh, me versus Phil. Good Actually, luck. I'm so in on this. I'm gonna fucking destroy Phil. <laughs> <laughs> no, it'll be a competition to see who is actually worst. No, it'll well, be either. A... No. <laughs> I uh, can't yeah. wait. Holy this will be shit. great. I'm gonna win. Bro, I'm gonna win. I'm gonna win. I have to be. I have now. I'm like determined to like just dis just dis destroy Phil with this. Tucci right. ain't Jesus. He can't do miracles. <laughs> you guys are hilarious. Yeah. Oh, oh my man. god. This is fun. I'm looking. You know why? We I we both been so busy. I mean, I it seems like you're getting so much done, but uh, it's great being back on stream, man. This has been fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's been fun. I mean, I've been busy. I've been doing the draw streams, but it's kind of on and off. Like I skipped last week. I'm busy yeah. as fuck, but it should no, be know. a little better now that I have. Um, yeah, I got a lot of stuff out of the way. So, uh, Bancroft says only vert skaters wear knee pads. They wear elbow pads at the same time. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Just, Bancroft yeah. actually he did um he did rollerblading, but I'm sure he knows more about skating. Uh, do you? Maybe you should add elbow pads. I don't know. Dude, I'm really excited. I really, we should set, I'm actually so in at this idea now of going against Phil. Uh, I am Phil. too. This is going to be hilarious. Oh my God, dude. All right. I'm going to, I'm messaging Anthony right now. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Uh, Dallas asked, are we going to Heroes? I am going to Heroes. I already have a table and um, if you can make it there, that would be great. So, Heroes in the middle of June. It's Father's Day's weekend, so it's easy to remember. It's a good show, very art focused, and um, basically the whole fiendish team is gonna be there. So that's why I'm like, I'm so excited. I love Heroes as a con. Heroes is like this show that everybody in the South, like all the comics people in the South, just get together and go to right i remember being in college years ago we would just migrate like we would just do a five-hour road trip because it's about five hours from atlanta and we just drive to charlotte and we like pile like six or seven people in one hotel room because we were all dirt poor and then we'd all like share tables and we would still do heroes it's so much fun i got so many memories and it's a good show it's run by um a comic shop a local yeah. comic shop in charlotte heroes aren't hard to find run by uh, this guy called Shelton, who's good people. I've been to the comic shop as well. So, yeah, yeah I highly recommend it. Um, yeah, it's just very artist-focused. And what happens is the the hotels are right next to the convention hall. And, like, right next to it. It's not, yeah, like... Yeah, right next like, to it. Like, Charlotte really cool. is a... It's a small, small city, so it's it's actually right next to it. It's not like, oh, you had to walk across a highway or something, like some big cities, like, if, any, if you're in L.A. And so everyone just migrates to the hotels and everyone's just like in the lounge drinking and doing art stuff. It's, it's fucking great. Um, so I'm going to be there for like five days straight. I can't wait to be back. I, I skipped last year and I'm so glad I got in this year. So I hope to Are see gonna you be, guys we're, there. You're going to be there five. Wait, hang on. Oh, Thursday. Um, yeah. Thursday through Monday. Like if Are I'm going to go to a con, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to a con. Are we like, planning that out too? By the way, because like we got a bunch of us going, right? Are we all? We no, probably not. No, I'm just gonna get a hotel. Okay. Oh, yeah, right, I have well, a I me and a few like I have travel plans with a, a few other people. I'm gonna be driving up from Atlanta with some other people. It's but I assume you're gonna be flying from Jersey. So yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just gonna get a hotel. We're Let gonna, me know what like, days you're going, though, hotels. so I'll get... Thursday through I'll... Monday. All right, I'll do that. Are you staying over Monday night? No, no. I, I just don't like to have to leave Sunday night. I like to chill, hang out with people yeah. Sunday night. Oh, that's what I do, on too. Monday. Yeah. yeah, there's no I, way I like I to actually hang out with friends after a con. Yeah, I mean, that's what we did last time. We were up till, uh, God, what time? I barely slept that night. On, uh, oh, the, honestly, the evening after a show, 
after everyone else has gone home it's great i love hanging out sunday nights because usually you just add you know you're just like in a lounge or something or or like at a restaurant or bar and it's it's just comics people it's like small group of your comics friend everybody who's still there and you're just talking about art and talking about work and all kinds of fun stuff and it's really chill and i i like having that little bit of a wind down last time i when we would we did tampa i stayed like most of monday because we were just like let's just go sit at a kava bar and chill and we were waiting for something i forgot what we were waiting for but i was there till like 2 p.m wow. and like we went to a kava, kava bar and Allie fell asleep and we're like let's not wake her so we were just there for most of the day it was great there better be yeah. another stream of Rini bullying Vaughn on an Uber ride. Yeah, that was that was fun. Um, It'll happen. Uh, I, <laughs> no, the Tampa, it was so fun because it was like we really got to like know like we obviously we knew each other the weekend, but it was like really sitting down as relaxing and just hanging out. Oh, uh, it was such a it was such it was, a good show. Like I think really that was. is why that night alone is why we're all I think got a lot closer after that night. Like that was so yeah, fun. I mean. I mean the um like the Brazilian dinner and hanging out and drinking that was all fun, but what my favorite moments as Word they are with night. every show are just sitting in a lobby and talking with people about comics. That was my favorite part, yeah. And about storytelling, and it's like what I do when I'm just hanging out and doing work streams with friends, but we're doing it in real life. We're just talking about well. What kind of comics do we want to make? I had so many good conversations with people about why they love comics. Yeah. And that's just, and it felt like it being on the con floor is also a lot of fun and you have great conversation, you connect with the fans, but being it's able different. to really delve into why we do what we do after a show, um, just like chilling at a bar, that is great. Like, that's why I like going to shows and meeting people in person. And, uh, yeah, I can't wait to do that again. Yeah. That was, uh, is a great steak place close by. Yeah. So um, downtown Charlotte oh, is not that far away. There's a string of really good restaurants, like a short Uber drive away from the convention and hotel. So there's a um, Buffalo Wild Wings. I like to portray Charlotte as Atlanta, but smaller and nicer. <laughs> so. Yeah. I've never, I still got to go to it. I can't uh, compare it to Atlanta, but I did like Charlotte or what little I saw of it. I like Charlotte. Charlotte's nice. Yeah. It's like a small city. Yeah. I, um, Baltimore is also a good show. I think it's Baltimore. probably, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it this year, but eventually I did Baltimore years and years ago. Baltimore, I went with Billy. That was a really fun show. Yeah. I like um, to, um, try to get in on that. Yeah, I'm trying to. That's why I'm really trying. Well, I'm really trying to get the book done because I want to, but also so I could actually set up at cons, uh, and go. And um, God, it's so fun. Like hanging out at these cons with you guys was that. That was wait. No, we've only hung out at the the one, but it was like even still. God, that was fun. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I, I mean, what's cool is there's a bunch of them. Around like a bunch of small ones around New Jersey, New York. Yeah, um, you're in a good location for shows. I'm in a great location for shows. Uh, it's so weird. There has been a dry spell, and then for some reason, on one day they have a little anime con, the New York one with that Billy's at, and a little New Jersey one, all the same day after a dry spell of like a month. I'm like, really? There's like all, it one happens. day. Uh, and uh, see, so yeah, I'm going to the New York one. Yeah, wait, the New York one. Who's going to be there? Stranko. Oh, Klaus Jansen's going to be there. Uh, Ray Lago. Oh, I think Ray Lago. I'll get him to sign my uh, omnibus. Oh, Lee Weeks. Uh, Lee Weeks is a good dude. Scott Hanna. That's cool. That's a good lineup. It's a really good lineup. Hmm. Honestly, I'd like to do more shows, but I kind of just don't have the bandwidth to go through. Oh, I have to apply for all of them and do all the logistics. Um, and I'm it's weird because I'm in this weird place where it's like I'm not like a famous artist who can get invited to shows. Um, mm. but I, I could probably 
I can probably get a table at smaller to mid size shows, but like SC San Diego isn't going to invite me anytime soon, even though I would love to do New York and San Diego. But if I do New York, I have to buy my own table. I can do that, but it's also yeah. the same month that I'm doing sofa. Um, so I'm going to Columbia again. I'm just, I don't like doing two shows in the same month. It's a pain in the ass. So yeah. Um, can I just get famous, please? That would be really great. Actually, it yeah. wouldn't be great. I don't like personally want to be famous, but it would also make my life and business yeah. easier. Like my business would would benefit. My life would suffer. Let me rephrase that. My life would suffer because it'll be fine. Famous shit, but my business would do great. So <laughs> it's uh, all about how you handle the fame, you know. Oh no, being famous sucks. Ugh. Well, you know from experience? I want Fiendish to be famous. Yeah. But not, not me. Yeah. There's a difference. Yeah. I, it's just getting attention online is enough experience for me. I understand. I understand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, I'm sure. I'm sure. There's a lot of stress. Get famous, take Vaughn with you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, says we're trying to make you famous. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Just focus on fiendish, though. I just want fiendish to be. I'll famous. become famous. Well, yeah. Vaughn I mean, wants to be personally famous. He wants uh, to be bowed down to. Do he I? Uh, I mean, it is a bit. I could say, yeah. You honestly, know, always, uh, honestly, the older I get, the more I'm like. Fame is retarded. I don't want to be famous. Yeah, that's honestly how I'm getting too. I used to always be like, oh, I want to be like a movie star, like actor, whatever. And I, I, to an extent, but it's like when you look at the stuff you have to sacrifice and how much red tape a lot of those people go under, you know, it's like, oh, how you have all oh, the brand deals, yeah, everything. And it's like, okay, how, to what extent well, is, is, is the success worth it? Well, it's more what people do to get to that point. Yeah, that's what I mean, the selling out. Yeah. Like, who's asked yet? There are people who didn't have to do that, and that's what I want, right? Yeah. And, um, but those I mean, people I, are, and people I, are <laughs> I believe I can do it. Yeah. I believe I can do it, and because uh, I know I'm good at what I do. It might be harder. It might take more time, but... Um, I would regret my path, my entire life, if I didn't do it this way. Because I care about what I do. So that's just how it is. I, I could... I could be making so much more money. I could sell out to Hollywood. I could... Like, I've been in animation. I, I've had contacts. And I chose to do this. And actually authentically try to make a good comic. Because I feel like this is worth my time. So that's what I'm going to keep doing. Do a real one, Rini. Yeah, Hollywood. Is <laughs> <laughs> Yo, says being famous sucks. Does, dude. Nice program. Yeah, the more the people I know who have a not even just like celebrities. I don't really know celebrities, but I know cosplayers with a huge following, some artists with a huge following, all of them are like they try to keep their private lives as private as possible. And honestly, I think the celebrities who don't do that, they're all kind of nuts. They're nuts. And, like, the stuff I hear about the minute you get famous, like, the people that try to take advantage of you, the, like, um, you know, especially in Hollywood, you get handlers trying to push weird stuff on you. Like, so much depends on just who you come into contact with. And some people are lucky and have really good people around them. Some people are unlucky and have bad people around them and are also easily manipulated. And those are the people that end up crazy on drugs and having a meltdown and shaving their heads. And it's not really their fault, but it's a meat grinder. They'll they'll yeah. destroy you because they don't care about you. It's all about using people. You're human capital. And I don't want that. It's true. It's so uh, so nuts. A lot of shit that goes. and it's gross. it's hard. It gets harder and harder to keep. Entertainment keep... is gross, and every every sort of entertainment, not just Hollywood. It's all it's all a lot of fucking bullshit, dude. Yeah. There are a few people that have real talent that can that can shine through. That definitely still exists, right? But um there's a lot of like disgusting shit. Yeah, I've noticed it's bad. Um it's like 
And it's not, that's the thing. And I, I guess getting back to like, even just when I, when I write about like my comic or whatever, like I, I don't want to necessarily hide those things, but it's like idealism and just still being true to yourself in spite of all that. Because you can get into defeatism and be like, oh, what's the point? And it's like, mm -hmm. you got to believe that there's something on the horizon and eventually mm -hmm. it will get there. And even if you don't, it's worth the pursuit. I agree. Well said. So, I'll be right back. Keep talking. Oh, I'll, shit. All right. I was going to piss. All right. I guess I'll wait till, till she's done. Uh, so, I know, like, we talked with her. She could still hear me. I think because we're going to go with, I sent her, I think she got confused because I sent her two designs for Dark Cloud. There's the bulkier one, which is the one we're going with. And this was the earlier version because I want to be fucking <laughs> huge, you know? uh i kind of i based them on like the physique of like dark knight returns batman um a bit mixed with like darth vader and about dude i this was such a my artist came up with such a fucking cool design because i remember i would i've had this vision of this character for literally years since i was in second grade like the character dark cloud and by the way, Dark Cloud is a name that's stuck since the beginning. Unlike this character, this main character, who was Josh Hanksley, aka Lightning Lad. Now he is Miles Hanksley, aka Galvanite. Um, but anyway, uh, Dark Cloud, real name not revealed at this time. Uh, like I always knew he was gonna have a black helmet, but for some reason I just could never visualize the face. I just couldn't do it. I didn't know, like I just would picture it almost blank. And I remember him coming up with helmet designs, and I was like, that's it. That's a good one. I just kind of ran with it. Um, but yeah, the shoulders are a bit different because I noticed Rini's using the skinny one. For the bigger one, the shoulders are a bit different. They're a bit spikier. What's interesting, too, is um, Dark Cloud is an name. Isn't it? <laughs> oh, Dark Cloud. No. Uh, so what's interesting, too, is if you look at the mini... Pr Actually, I haven't... Zach tweeted it a while ago, but you're going to see the mini print art of Dark Cloud. While it's mostly similar, um, Zach, my uh, trade, my mini print artist, drew his gun being like, because th there was the gun design, right? But my main artist pictured it like, let's say like about as big as an assault rifle or so on the character. Whereas my buddy Zach he used the exact same design, but just made it way bigger. So it's like the kind of gun Cable would use in the 90s. And what's interesting too is like because uh, whatever, regardless, because I'm gonna let my, let my main artist decide, you know, what the final size is in the book, because you, you will see it in the book, his signature cloud gun. What's interesting is uh, at occupying time is uh, I'm like, oh, good job, you can talk a lot. Either way, canonically, Zach, uh, you could have the big gun be like a rough draft or a whatever. So either way, both guns can canonically exist. Or you could have a backup big boy gun and then a smaller one on the mission. Uh, <laughs> so, Victor is just making stuff up. Is that true, Irene? Yeah, I'm from China. Yeah, yeah, that's totally, totally the story we're going. <laughs> Victor's just joking. Um, so continue. Oh, you want to stop talking? Oh, no. I apologize. I'm back now. I'm, I'm here to save you. It's okay. So were you going to, are we bulking him up? Is what we're doing, right? Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to bulk him up. And did you want, like, we're, and we're sticking with just the, the fist, right? Which I'm fine with. Yeah. Okay, uh, cool. The fist. Okay. So here's what I'm thinking. I like, I want to, not the bark cloud. I want to do the, um. Those drones. So oh, we're gonna have a bunch of them. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. A cloud of them. Not like filling the whole screen, but around him. I think that'll look really cool. And what he can have is a device in his hand that's controlling them. Ooh. Dude, I, all right. So, so I, I, I think about that. That's actually really interesting because I so I might I mean, thankfully I still wrote it out, but I might even re when I rewrite some of the because I have the first eight issues written. It was eleven, and then I made the first issue three parts. So maybe it'll be, let's say, eight issues for now. Um, for the fight scenes, I might incorporate that in for late. So I'm glad it's this. Wow, that's so cool. Bad down goes solo. Bad, <laughs> bad. <laughs> what? <are you> <laughs> 
No. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. All right. Okay. Now, come on. There's plenty of, yeah, oh, things with an open hand. He could um, grab a hand. You know, he could um, conjure lightning. I can't think of anything weird he would do with an open hand, though. Can he do lightning balls? Yeah. It's in the script. I forgot. It's okay. <laughs> I have some. Oh, I do want to show you at some point because I know you're drawing, okay. but I, I have I'll a. I'll do a lightning Lord ball then. So no one can no... Photoshop like a giant cock in there. Awesome. <laughs> I do I'm have helping a. You. <laughs> Thank you. He's 15, Chad. Stop. <laughs> oh, I mean, when I was 15, I mean. Uh... I know, but we're adults. <laughs> uh, let's see. What was he going to say? Uh, I have a Lord Lightning reference in the comic. Yeah. Tell yeah. about it. No, I literally, I, I have, I could show you uh, one of the pages, but I literally have, like, in a notebook, rejected names. And uh, <laughs> I, I gave Lord <laughs> Lightning a cameo. That's great. I, Good so job. So it's kind of a creative block, because that happened on creative block, right? So in a way, it's kind of a creative block. Where we you yeah <laughs> you live, on, live on air i was so excited guys because i had the name for a while i was like you know what because initially it wasn't going to be an issue one at all it, he wasn't going to have a name and then it was going to be a reveal a title he earns lord lightning and then i said you yeah. know what, guys i'm going to just do it an issue one i said proudly i said on air after by the way let the record show let the record show and i've said this many times i said this to people in person including phil and brandon who both agreed that it was a good name uh, Chad Townsend agreed it was a good name. Uh, multiple people agreed that this was a good name. Mm -hmm. It was not on this particular stream. Uh, and I said, proudly, I said, yeah, no, he has a cool name, uh, Lord Lightning. And instantly Jake started fucking dying laughing. And then. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And, uh,. Yeah. You know, I I I, I cried. No, hmm. I didn't cry. I yeah, like, yeah. I was like, yeah. Just bald I, 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 Okay. We're, hey, that would have made you guys to, laugh harder, honestly, I feel like. As someone who cannot come up with cool moniker to save my damn I life, can. like, I understand. Shit well, I happens. Can come up with good ones. I'm and glad we caught your blunder before you put this in print and uh, it was too late. I have a there lot of cool character names. I just struggled with coming up with one for my main character, which was insane because it was like that was the only character I was telling people about. But like Golden Gallon is cool. Zelberin is cool. Madame Magnet. Um, you know, Dark Cloud is cool. But uh, no, I mean, it was it was so – I'm trying to find it. Um, <laughs> God damn it. That was so fucking funny. Um and they're being nice. Oh, no, no, wait, wait. So I can't believe that Phil and Brandon unironically thought that was a good name. I unironically I, thought it was a great name. I read your script. We must That was what I was confused. Case. I assumed you liked it because you had read the script. I thought when I read the script that it was supposed to be cringe. <laughs> so I didn't comment on it. I was like, Oh, he's supposed to have a cringy name. Surely this will change later. So I didn't comment on it. Or I would have told you this is cringe. I didn't think he was serious. Ah, oh, good memories. <laughs> I hide the pain. Good times. I did, oh, I actually let Alex VRB, because Alex VRB, it's, it's amazing. He always puts new names for my character in chat. Like, consistent every time. It's yellow, Honestly, sparky. Alex is really good with, well, like, he does a lot of joke names, but he's good with, like, taglines and names and stuff, dude. He is. He is. So I, I told him there was a line in the script where one of the characters jokingly calls, his best friend calls him other names. And I said, all right, Alex, you get to come up with the names for this line. And so nice. Alex, Alex has a line in the script uh, that he came up with. It's, hang on, let me cool. find the line in the script. I could spoil it. Uh, yeah, Alice is legit really good at these uh, good. Dude, names and taglines. I remember, like, when I was pitching Fiendish 1, Alex would show up in the chat and he just, like, came up with, with taglines. And I'm like, this is brilliant. <laughs> Why did I come up with this? Sometimes chat is just amazing. You guys are amazing. Mm, where is okay, this? There you go. Line? You guys like this lightning ball? So That's, we don't oh, know. That looks will. awesome. So nobody will Photoshop real balls in his hand. I think it's pretty cool. 
the yeah, the lighting cool. will be nice too. So it you looks can gorgeous. Have... Is he still going to be? Because we still want to make sure that he's the underdog, but it still looks awesome. Oh yeah. So what I'm thinking we can do is have a um, contrasting lightning. So his lightning, oh, the, the, his lightning will be yellow, and whatever your villain's lightning scheme will be, and we can have some of his lights coming out of his like parts of his armor and the drones, so it can be opposing glows against each other. Mm -hmm. And I'm everything else. I want to just be dark. It's a dark hallway. Maybe there'll be some like nuclear glow from that door in the background, but it'll be a like a dark environment with really focused lighting. Yeah, so Dark Cloud's thing, he's almost entirely black. Uh, like, because that's his whole thing. He's still Oh, perfect. Um, okay, so, so that's the, actually like, the better. the red glow of his eyes. Uh, that's better. So here, but... what I'm going to do is have... What I'm thinking of now is Dark Cloud will be entirely black, and then there will be back glow from that door behind him that's reddish. And his eyes, his, uh, his eyes on his suit will also be red. So everything opposing your uh, Niles will be, Miles, not Niles, will be red. And then Miles will have yellow and everything That's else. Cool. That's so cool. I'm excited to see that color. Uh, so I have the line that Alex V came up with. So basically he goes, um, and while we're at it, come with, uh, let's come with a better super name. Uh, oh, wait, super name. Oh, actually, I got to change that line in the script. Fuck. Oh, Rushbrook. No, I said it for tomorrow by accident. It's it's now. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> I changed it like five minutes after I, I, I started it, but I guess some people were mistaken. It's my fault. It's my fault. What's up, Michael? Hold Michael! 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 The books are here! Did you see the books? Oh my gosh! Hold on. I have to shut the books off again. Let's go. Hold on. Okay. I, I gotta use about them anyway. Be better. Okay, bye. Look. Oh my gosh! I got all the books. This is the newest print run. Okay, hold on. Um, no, this is the old Fiendish two book. Um, so here's a new Fiendish one book. New Fiendish two. Uh, you didn't. That's not your work though. I want to show you your work specifically. Um, check it out. It's real! Oh my gosh! Ah! So excited. And I will be sending you some comp copies soon. I'll just have RJ send them to you because I don't have enough. Um, uh, like, the printer sent me only five copies of each cover. But yeah, I'll have uh, RJ sent you a batch. But here, look! Behold! Ah! I'm so happy with how it turned out. And here's the back cover. The um the spread looks like this. So yeah. Oh, this is a great main campaign cover. I'm so happy with it. Uh I just I just love this cover. Michael did so great on this. This is one of those covers where I wish it was a permanent cover. I kind of had the same feeling with the chapter two cover. I'm like, I wish this was a permanent cover, but it's fine. Like I want both campaign covers and permanent covers to be really good like have their own flair to it because it, it should be worth it like both should be you know i don't ever want to um have a cover that's like oh it's a permanent cover i don't need to put in effort anymore or the same for a campaign cover but yeah look oh my gosh this is awesome um dango solo wants me to show off the green one here you go Here's the uh, Indiegogo Springtide cover. It's a lot greener in real life. I, I notice on camera it doesn't look that green, and I don't know why. At least for me on my monitor. But yeah, it's quite green when I look at it in reality. The uh, My printer prints... Well, just most colors are really bright. Greens usually don't... The uh, variation within greens digitally... An, an RGB digital coloring suffer a lot when they're translated into CMYK printing. Um, and they're usually kind of dull, though my printer manages to get the greens like fairly bright as well. And uh, sometimes the blue suffers as well. But yeah, my printer has a way of making CMYK colors still be very vibrant. And I'm very impressed. Like green will always suffer because for some reason, RGB to CMYK, the green will always 
like you just can't get as many levels. That's why. Okay, so when you're coloring for CMYK printing, here's a trick: use white on to highlight your greens instead of yellows. It'll help because if it's yellows, that gradation will almost entirely be lost when you print. Just a tip, or you can color in CMYK. Like that would also help a lot. And here's the black and white cover. Skulls and dead things. Ah. Here's the permanent cover. Ah. Look. Look at this. Look. I have been waiting to do this cover for so long. <sighs> you guys don't even understand. I've had this cover sketched out since like the beginning of book two. And I was like, I can't wait to do 2.5. I really want to draw this cover. Mm. <laughs> oh, Jeremy Peterson. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. Hello. Mihao. Oh, gotcha. I don't know. I need a chat. I don't think I've seen you before. But thank you for joining us. Um... Vaughn is off screen. <laughs> hey, hey, we must cherish these moments while they last. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. Well, thanks to your great work, Michael. That's why they look so amazing. And um, uh, I can't, uh, I can't wait to flip through. You know what? I can show the first couple of pages because that's already up on the website, anyways. I won't flip through like you know any more than that. But look, here are the interiors. Look at that. Da, da, da. That's how it looks. That looks gorgeous. Am I allowed to talk? I've been told. <laughs> Enjoy this. No, no, you must shut up forever. All right, fine. I won't tell you your comic looks good. <laughs> <laughs> you say whatever you want. I, don't... I know. I'm I ain't the boss of you, Vaughn. I, I, I know. Actually, technically, in this moment, I'm the boss of you. Uh, no, you're not. Yeah, because you're doing, you're literally doing work for me. Motherfucker, you're a client of mine, okay? Ain't nobody the boss of me. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yikes. Uh, yikes. Oh, is, this yikes. Me, is this how you treat all of the people you... Probably, actually. No, I just have a problem with authority. Have you not noticed? You know what? I bet you wouldn't call Billy Tucci a motherfucker. No, because he's nice and he's uh, he's <laughs> wonderful. Wow. And he's uh, <laughs> doesn't drive me nuts. Yeah, that's all I'm going to show. I'm not going to spoil too much. But yeah, this is a uh, this this cover is now available on the website, so you guys can order it on there. And the other covers are the campaign covers. Will start fulfillment uh, should be in the next week. So there you go. Mm. Dun dun dun. All right, I think um, yeah, I think I'm I'm probably gonna take a break because I want to bulk your villain. I want to bulk Dark Cloud up, and then um, that's probably a good time to get some sleep for me. But yeah, if you want to, I'll do. You're allowed to. Sleep. I'll do that. No, I'm no, not. No. But yeah, the um the. Bulking him up and just changing his arm will be really, really fucking boring work. So I'll just do that um, offline. But also, I've been streaming for three hours. So I think this is a good stopping point. I hope you guys mm -hmm. like this. And I hope you guys like this Phenomenova cover. This will be launching, what, in five days? Friday? Is that when we're yeah, launching? Yeah, does that time still work for you, by the way, on uh, 7? Or do you need to push it back? Uh, probably should do it later. All right. Let me know. Don't... Let me know. Yeah. I probably would prefer to do later. I mean, if, okay. just a little. Not too late, but um, we'll figure it out. Yeah, Friday, Phenomenova will be launching. And uh, it's going to be great. So see you guys there. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Yes, and uh, I've got some world building videos upcoming. So I've got to finish editing them, but I should have them be uploaded soon so be sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on those when those show up because um it would really help for those to 
get some views and get uh, a little attention. I want to start actually putting effort into the channel because I've just been like kind of streaming. Like I mm -hmm. stream every week, but streams don't really help your channel grow, right? No, really and I haven't really I done anything to help my channel grow. So I don't like YouTube is just kind of a thing I do for fun and because I, I want to promote other people's comics mm -hmm. and like, um, you know, it, it's more, I know the existing fans of Fiendish enjoy the draw streams, but I'm hoping these world building videos and character intros will provide something for new viewers and new fans. That's also why I'm putting the comic on Global Comics. So I'm trying to expand. So I'd really appreciate it if you're watching, subscribe to the channel and keep an eye out for those upcoming videos. And of course, check out Fiendish and be sure you're uh, all signed Stub up to my subscribe. channel too. I got that video essay. I have been, I have the, the process. Every time I'm about to get close, I'm like, Oh, this will be almost done. <laughs> it's not, it takes a while. No, no, no it, it honestly, takes a while. Cause the video, video no, this video you don't understand is literally, uh, what I thought would be like, Oh, maybe an hour is currently an hour over an hour and a half long. This video essay is going to be over. That's two crazy. Hours long. Oh, that's crazy. You know, I have one plan too. Video essays are no joke. They're hard to do. If you want, a, if you ever want to hire someone to edit it for you. I don't need someone to edit my well, I don't I guess I don't know how how in-depth it is. Why That's would why would I well because the, those things are a bitch depending on how you decide to edit it? Like if you if you do it like oh. probably in the style Wendigoon does, you'll probably be fine. But if you're doing like yeah, I'm so not crazy. I'm not on camera because I do so many takes, but it's just audio. I've done video essays. You can watch, I did a subverting heroes one. I did one on why female characters if modern female characters fail. Yeah. I have done some of those videos, but very rare, so most people don't, you know, pay attention. They do well. My subverting heroes video did really well. So I'd like to do more. I just don't have time because I'm take trying. Time. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I have another one. I have this one that I want to do on um, on rewarding your core. I've, I've got this whole theory about your core audience and sacrificing your core audience. I've been wanting to do it for a while. So I think it'll be really good. But yeah, um, that's great. And it's great that you're doing the that video essay as well. Diversifying your content is a good thing. Diversity. So, the good type of diversity, everyone. Another so thing yeah, you can go do follow honestly, on. Another thing is honestly, sometimes just if you feel like, do you ever feel like talking to someone about something you're interested in? Shut the fuck up, snark. Yes, continue. A snarky is so funny. <laughs> Snarky's great. Well, you got a uh, problem with snarky? No, I said he's so funny. I oh, love okay. snarky. He's yeah, snarky. Snarky's great. You just like him because he insults me. Yeah, mostly. But also, he's great. He's nice. To no, me. I do. I love. I love Snarky. Um, <laughs> what was it saying? What were I you guess, saying? I don't remember. He called me a twink splainer, and I lost track. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I guess we're ending the stream, Lynn. Um, <laughs> I, no. Thank you for the link, Diego Solo. I appreciate it. Um, evergreen content is in, is the way. Always has been. You mean like not streams, right? Streams are kind of temporary, aren't they? But yeah, I'm the, trying to build more actual life is it's actual that, content. That's one thing I'm real. I look, I love streaming, especially because it's just when I'm hanging out with friends or the chat or even just the chat, right? But it's like the stuff you come back to years down the line. Usually, you'll be stream clips, maybe. But streaming, streaming is good for maintenance, and it's fun for. Yeah entertainment but i i'm not gonna build a, honestly streaming is exhausting for me and I, I do streams to promote comics and i feel like i've explained this before like i don't mind streaming is fun when it's a couple times a week but more than that is honestly really yeah tiring I'm for me. With you. so um i want to make more content but more content also takes time and i'm just really busy but i want to try to slowly you know like i said trying to build everything up and uh put my feelers out there and see what works so yeah stay tuned everybody yeah sounds good yeah. sub to my All channel right. too oh wait i keep i do this every time i don't why would i point there's point to yourself what yeah you i was gonna say to my channel i didn't know where to All right. why did you point 
What? Okay. Him. All right. He's drunk. I'm not Everyone, drunk. Have a good night. You guys are great. I appreciate you. I'll see you on Wednesday. I'm going to be promoting Narwhal on Wednesday, so it's going to be a fun show. It'll Let's be great. Go. It's going to be a party. I, I expect there to be lots of drink, drinking and um, fun, fun theorizing and shit. So, all right. Have a good night, everybody. See you. See you guys. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 bye.